Okay. Okay. I go right to Bailey. Welcome back to the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. Tonight, the Tigers 1-2 and two, take on the Green Wave 2-1. and one. No question about it for Memphis State season, Bob Wynn. This is a pivotal matchup. Very big game, Dave. One that, as we said in the open, the, the kids have aimed at this all week. We uh, we felt like we went out last week without any defense. We we put on a pretty good offensive show at Louisville, but the defense was non-existent. We have not had a game this year that we've put all three parts of the ball game together. Either the, either the special teams don't show up, the offense maybe not plays up to their capabilities, or the defense doesn't play well. Tonight may be the night. Charlie Bailey is very well aware of that. He knows he's got to stop Terrence Jones. He's the man, and uh, Charlie was talked to earlier and he said this. Well, I think we can't let him do a scramble around and you know, hurt us that way. Uh, we also got to take care of what we call our option routes. That's the backside of the backfield because Pierce is leading the team uh, as far as the receiver is concerned. And we're going to have to hug him a little bit and whenever they throw the ball to him, we're going to have to break up, maybe knock the ball loose a few times and we're going to have to come up with some big plays. And also, we got to take care of the trap option. That's a uh, scheme where that... Uh, that they fake to the fullback, come on outside, and option, uh, whoever has option responsibility, and they got a lot of what we call an uh, alley out there, and we're going to have to take that away. The big plays have been missing all year long. Memphis State needs one for sure tonight, and they've got to stop. Terrence Jones, he was the number five in the voting of the Heisman candidate last year. We'll be back with the kickoff in a moment. The ball is in the air and deep, deep for Memphis State. They've got the football and a nice return, a return I should say, to the 27-yard line, scampered Charles Wilson. Wilson had not really returned kickoffs that much until just a couple of weeks ago. Actually, Dave, actually, Dave, Charles uh, returned the kickoffs last week against Louisville. There you see Memphis State's offensive backs and receivers. Now it's Tim Jones, I believe, who is the starter. Rusty Charles started last week. Jones healthy this week. And he will call the signals to begin with. And on first down, he's going to pass the football. And Wayne has got the football, and Wayne's going to get about to three or four. And a flag thrown immediately. Dave, uh, as the coaches have told us all week long, the idea tonight is a lot of quick screens, a lot of quick passes, set up maybe even a double screen off the option play. It's good to see Tim Jones back. He's been injured. He looked healthy all week at practice, and we expect a big game out of him tonight. Richard Sauter, a junior, made the stop for Tulane. And this is something I think, Bob, Memphis State's going to try a lot of. And let's see if we see the penalty. What we really expected here was maybe Tim to sprint out a little more, but he goes back and sets up in the pocket nicely, stays in there, takes the rush. He sprints out at the last minute when the uh, protection breaks down and hits Wayne Pryor, who's his safety valve on this play. Protection didn't break down that much, partially because there was a hold, and that's why you have the 10-yard walk-off. It will be second down now. About 20 yards to go. There's the line. Daryl Nicholson, Keith Bland, Clark Stevenson, Reed Bennett, Keith Shirley, and the tight end Rodney Higdon, who will be more of a blocker than a pass catcher. This time, as a key player right through the middle, and he'll get nearly the penalty back on the first down. Big hole through the left side that time. Thank Keith Bland and Daryl Nicholson for that. It was Richard Harvey and Lenzer Burton who made the stop for Tulane. You know, Dave, the penalty on the line, the holding uh, earlier, it's a very inexperienced line, but these guys have each week made a little more progression. They're a nice big hole for Wayne Pryor. And then this is third down, and we aren't sure what that penalty was all about. It was a loss of down, too. So it's third down. We'll call it 10, and Tim Jones will pass it down. He's got some room, and he's just shot of the first down. It'll be a yard shy at the 38-yard line. Great scrambling effort by Tim Jones. Protection breaks down. He comes out of the pocket. Knows exactly where the first down marker is. Comes up a little bit short. I'm sure Charlie Bailey said, don't take the big hit early. Protect that shoulder. Let's see how it feels after a few licks, but don't take the big hit. So the penalty really hurts Memphis State. And fourth and about a half a yard. And the cut will come Jeff Biden's average at about 40.6 yards of kick this year. Had a slow start in the Ole Miss game. Slowly but steadily, the numbers have increased in the following race. Back deep, Mitchell Price, and the kick. Long out, but not really high. And play 
Chase has a little bit of room, but not enough to do any real damage to Memphis State. His return to the 28 yard line. Great coverage by the Tigers, Dave. Over the past few weeks, we've given up some yardage on kickoff and punt returns. With the deep snapper, number 84, Andy Wood, hustling down the field and makes the tackle. A 38 yard punt. It was Steve Smith and Andy Wood who made the stop for the Memphis State special teamers. First down and 10 for Terrence Jones. And Tulane, the first time they touched the football, Jones fakes one side. He goes to Michael Price, but you see the throw uh, maybe a little too far. Well, Dave, last week, Michael Price was the leading receiver for Tulane against Kansas State. There you see uh, the backfield, Terrence Jones, Melvin Adams. He's the fullback who will do most of the running. Michael Pierce, the great uh, tailback, Jerome McIntosh, and all these guys are the and fighter back respectively. Right. Two men split to the left side, one man in motion. Jones, good straight ahead. A whole lot of room for Melvin Adams, and there is some emotion coming from the Memphis State Tigers, and that was the big wrap. They weren't Real psyched. Tony Manning was very psyched on that. The offensive line of Tulane, they're pretty big. They're in shoulders. John McCall, Fred Plunkett, Kent Lattimore, Jim Bishop, and Chuck Gorman, the tight end. It'll be third down, and they lost about a yard on that play. Third down. Oh, no. This play for the Tiger defense. They can't lose to Tane on Terrence Jones. Oh, he's way overthrown. He was looking that time for the fullback, it wasn't even close. So Jones, a little rusty on his first attempt here against the Memphis State defense. And Tulane will have to kick the football away. Mike Canoose will come in to do the kicking. Another change for the Tigers this week. Jeff Fight had been returning our punts. Sure-handed Jeff Fight. We've gone to Mike Nettles. A little more speed. A senior has done this before. Maybe I will break one tonight. Nettles is back in the kick. Is long. And it takes a two-lane bounce. And it was a great man. Picks it up at the 25. And boy, did he pay the price. Memphis State gets the football back in just a few. Welcome back to the Superdome. And second down and long yardage. Gerald White cut it on the right side. He's going to get pretty good yardage to about the 30. It will set up third down and a long three and a half or so. We want to apologize to those of you back home. There's been a mix-up. And... The officials are not cooperating, and they're not giving us our television timeout, so we may miss a few plays here and there, but we'll keep you very much informed on the first play, Wayne Pryor carried, and got about a yard. This is officially third down and four yards to go. The ball snicked there by the third. Two wideouts on the right side. The motion was wide as they came up. Nothing doing by the Tulane defense, and Memphis State's going to have to kick the football away. They, they, the Tulane defense is doing a lot of stunts. When you coming in, they try to compensate for their light weightness with a lot of uh, a lot of movement in the line, and they do a lot of stunts, and that's going to be uh, difficult for us to read early on in the game. Jeff Fight back to punt one more time, and Mitchell Price back to receive for Tulane. The left-footed Jeff Fight punt will come down at the 40 and angle toward the sideline. And about the 41-yard line, Tulane will take over. They've got good field position. We didn't fare very well in the exchange of punts. The ball hits the ground, and it takes a big Tulane bounce on that punt on ours and hits the ground and backs up. And I'm sure this is Jeff Fight's first time in this building, and I'm sure he's still a little awestruck. He was last night. He stayed in here and worked a little extra. Maybe took 10 or 15 extra kicks after the team had gone back to the locker room. I'm sure his time will come back because he didn't kick well last night. Yeah, it is tough, no doubt about it. You look up and instead of seeing sunshine or clouds or stars, you see a roof. It's over that. It's different, no doubt. Darren Jones has to pick it up. Eldon Adams just has not a whole lot of room there. Good defense by the Memphis State front line. Well, I tell you what, Greg Ross and Torrey Epps good. Just a heck of a job of step in the middle of the line. I think the ball carrier that came in there may have been Rodney Hunter. It is Rodney Hunter. We didn't expect him to play a whole lot tonight, but we will, obviously. There's that front line, Clarence Heber, Greg Ross, Torrey Epps has had a terrific year. Tony Manning and Marlon Brown. Marlon Brown, an All-American candidate. Jones on second down and long, over the middle. He had a great week last week. He's terrific receiving out of the backfield, but he's got the first.
first down inside Memphis State territory. Last week against Kansas State, uh, Pierce Jones threw for 180 yards and 140 of the yards went to Michael Pierce. They swing him out of the backfield, they find the seam in the zone. Turns, uh, turns it into a big gainer, Carlos Hollowell on the tackle. Carlos Hollowell, the number one tackler on the Memphis State defense, just a sophomore, a great surprise. Jones looks like he's going to keep going, he pitches it off, and Pierce will gain about four to about the Memphis State 41-yard line. Mike Nettles came over from the cornerback on the right side and made the stop, and so it will set up second down and about five yards to go. You know, on that completion over the middle, as you look at the Memphis State secondary. There's the two linebackers. We talked about Hollowell. Damon Young, the leader, really, of this team, the number one tackle last year. Then the backfield of Randall Cooper, Reggie Dubois, Eddie Moore, and Mike Nettles. I like the way Terrence Jones reads the defense on that completion over the middle. He just read exactly where everybody was going to go. This is going to go back again. Memphis State's defense not fooled at all. Hunter runs the football, but Tory Epps and Marlon Brown get over in a hurry. The space star. Marlon Brown coming off a tremendous year last year. The oldest of the Tiger players at 26 years old. An Army veteran who played over in Germany for a U.S. Army team there in Ramstein. We look to him for leadership. He's, uh, he's had a little bit of a slow start this year. Teams seem to run away from him. Third down is short, too. Big play for Memphis State's defense early in the game. Jones will pass. He's got time. He's going to run. And it's picked up. Anymore. Neal's got the football at the 7 or 8 yard line. The study of the nine. And a big break there. We talked about the big play. And Anymore just came up with it. But an FSA defense. Well, I tell you, Anymore has done a great job. He made about the middle of last season when Ron Palmer broke his leg and Reggie Dubose moved to strong safety. He's really learning the position. Had his first interception last week against Louisville. Much the same play. Comes back and picks off one again here today. His second of the season. Memphis State gets a good spot there at the nine. They're deep in their own hole in their own territory. But at least they got the football and they got the first big play. Let's see what Tim Jones can do from the eye formation. This is Xavier Good defense that time by Vincent Momore, the junior, from Marrero, Louisiana. How's that? Momore from Marrero. He also got help from Lenzer Burton, another sophomore. This is a young team, the defense. Two seniors, four juniors, four sophomores, and a freshman who's superb, Mark Thornhill, the corner on the right side. And Charles Wilson at the 24. First down Memphis State. And Tim Jones looked like a trooper on that sprint out. Well, this is what we've worked on all week long. This is the little quick routes, the sprint out passes that we've worked in practice on so much this week. This is why we needed Tim Jones back because he does give you that option. Finds Charles Wilson with our lead receiver last week and hits him on the out for the first down. Wilson with explosive speed. He's a big lead breaker tackle receiver. And he got one. Good team defense that time by Tulane. Nice, fierce determination by the X-Man, but Lonnie March came over. He's a junior from the left linebacking spot. They also got help from Thurston Harrison, and they bottled up the X-Man. I tell you what, he is exciting, though, isn't he? I mean, he can break one at any time. That's why we're trying to get an early look at him tonight, because he can be a very, very exciting player. It'll be second down and nine. They get the X-Man yard on that one. Jones from the IS. He looks to the left side, and Wilson's got the football, but there's definitely going to be defensive holding. I'm, I'm almost sure of that. I thought I saw Mark Thornhill, that freshman we talked about, holding on to Wilson. Let's see what the officials say. Well, I'm sure we're going to pick on Mark Thornhill to go that direction. He is a pure freshman from Mike Nettles High School, from Escambia High School down in Pensacola, Florida. Yeah, he just took Charles Wilson right out of bounds. Uh, tried to make sure he didn't catch the ball. They'll walk it back to the line of scrimmage and then count it out from there. While we got the opportunity, we sure want to thank all the fine sponsors tonight, the River Nettles Holding, the Holds. Defense, first down. There you hear the official give the defensive holding call. It's a first down. Fire, Real, Marion, Hudson, Rook, those are the fine holes. There'll be a people, Medna, Cow, Jewelers, the official.
Russell, Rolex dealer in Memphis, your Memphis Toyota dealers, Airport Covington Pike in performance, and of course the fine folks from Union Planners. Oh, no, 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 no. First down and 10, spot the ball to the 36 yard line of Memphis State. Timmy Jones on a key point. yards for Tim Jones, and you get the feeling Tim is starting to get comfortable here. Mitchell Price and Richard Harvey, their fine defensive linebacker in on the stop. Harvey had 14 solos last week against Kansas State and was named the Sports Illustrated Player of the Week. Oh, he's a great player. They've got so much speed on defense, but Tim Jones has speed as well. The man read the pitch. He pulls the ball back in and turns it upfield for a nice gainer. You know, I mentioned all those fine sponsors were coming tonight. So I had almost forgot about Budweiser Beer, sponsors of the 88 U.S. Olympic team. Second down, three. Jones is going to pass. He's going to run for Russell. And it's a catch. What a pretty toss. What a pretty toss. Tim Jones catches Charles Wilson streaking down the sideline, lays it out. You can never tell he's been hurt. The neck roll doesn't appear to be bothering him at all. What a toss. Boys by Timmy Jones, huh, Bob? It doesn't look like he's been out for two weeks. I tell you what, he stands back there. Great protection. Nobody close. He really has this ball out. Charles Wilson is beating his man down the, uh, down the side of the field. Great throw and catch. Wilson adjusted beautifully over the far shoulder, and he picks up 37 yards. That's Wilson's second catch of the game. First down and 10 for Memphis State at the 2 lane 22. Straight ahead. Wayne Pryor, he may get inside the 20-yard line. Memphis State's line doing the job now. Richard Harvey, that great linebacker again on the tackle, and he got help from Mitchell Price with the naming those two quite a bit. Watch for Tulane to really change their defensive scheme right here. From the 20 coming out and the 20 going in, they really come with a lot of blitzes. They'll change up and they'll stunt quite a bit here. Second down and seven yards to go. Jeff Fight is in now. He's on the left side. Third down and seven from the 19. Jones looks down. He's getting a signal from the sideline. Charlie Bailey telling Tim maybe with a tight end play here. And I think we're going to get a timeout. Tim Jones was not sure they could see Charlie Bailey. And they're talking over exactly what they want. They want to be sure. So we'll take a timeout too. Memphis State threatening. Come on back. Third down, seven yards to go from the two-lane 19-yard line. Tim Jones has Martin left side and Wilson on the right side. Screen the prior, little bit of room, and he's not going to get to the line of scrimmage. Out of bounds at the 20-yard line. It'll set up fourth down in about eight. Hey, feed the Tigers with a Memphis State University Visa card from Union Planners. With it, you show your support, and part of the proceeds go to the Alumni Association and Scholarship Fund. Apply for your Tiger card at any Union Planners branch or call 523-6737. Feed the Tigers. In comes Johnny Butler. He doesn't like the nickname, but sometimes they call him Biff. Line of a scrimmage at the 20, set it down at the 27, a 37-yard attempt by Butler. It is on the way. Good. Memphis State takes the first lead in this ball game over Tulane, three to nothing. There you see the happy totals. We'll come back for the kickoff in just a moment. Just a little under seven minutes to go in the first quarter. Memphis State has drawn first blood. They lead it three zip. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast on WMKW TV 30. I'm Dave Willotion along with Bob Wynn. And Bob, I really haven't had much of a chance to say this. Usually I'll say sports information director, but now you're a big shot. Assistant athletic director. <laughs> well, I don't know about a big shot. I, I still like to class myself an SID because that's the uh, the type of work that I enjoy the most. But uh, don't mind doing the marketing and promotions, which is, is part of my responsibility now. And, and thank you for the compliment. Well, I, congratulations. I live up to it. You certainly deserve the promotion, no doubt about it in anybody's mind. 
Johnny Butler, who just kicked that 37-yard field goal to put Memphis State ahead 3-0, gets ready to kick things off. The boot comes down to Michael Pierce, and Pierce has some room in the middle all the way to the 34-yard line of Memphis State. Michael Pierce, who was injured last week and did not return kicks, comes back just in time for Memphis State, and that's a heck of a return. Finally stopped that time by Glenn Rogers, Jr., the great youngster from Southside High School, played for his dad in high school. Boy, I tell you what, his dad was a great one for the Tigers. Wears the same jersey as his father, number 26. 11 plays, 69 yards, and eight up 226. The big play, a 37-yard pass from Tim Jones to Wilson. You couldn't ask for really a better start unless you got four more points, but Memphis State did move the football down. Jones has one man split left side, one man right. Terrence is going to pass the football. And it looks he's got push and can't hold on to the 42-yard line. Good defense and pressure by Damon Young that time, and Michael Pierce may have heard some footsteps. Terrence Jones, interesting story. You know, they're hyping him for the Heisman. They call him Louisiana Jones. And where does he do his magic? As we mentioned in the open, the Dome of Doom. Terrence Jones has got great numbers. We've seen him do tremendous things for the last three years, but down here in Louisiana, he's taking a lot of grief right now. They say he's not up to what he was last year. Maybe that's because of the loss of Mark Zeno. Well, he had 2,500 yards passing last year. He goes to the air again. He's got his man, and that is McIntosh. And uh, McIntosh knocked out of bounds about the 41-yard line or so. Damon Young and Mike Nettles knocked McIntosh out of bounds. He's a junior, 6'1". He's the leading receiver, 13 catches for 200 yards and a couple of touchdowns this year. It sets up third down and short yardage. We'll call it about two. And again, the Memphis State defense will be tested a bit. Last time it was third and two, a little deeper in Memphis State territory. Eddie Moore came up with that big interception. Well, he went home run the last time. I don't think he'll try that this time. Come on, Terrence, take it yourself. Jones is going to keep it. There's the pitch. And a big defensive play by Memphis State. Coming over was Nico Perkins, a backup linebacker, and what a play he made. It'll set up fourth down, and Tulane's going to have to punt the football away. Boy, I watch the way the Tiger defense strings this play out. Play off the blocks at the line of scrimmage. Here comes Carlos Hollowell down the line. He's in the picture, Reggie Dubose, and what a play by Nico Perkins. So in the punt comes Mika News. Back is Mike Nettles, who got his clock clean the last time he fielded a punt. News is punt high, not too long. It'll be taken by Nettles at the 35, and he fumbles, and it looks like Tulane's got the football. There is a flag down, however. We'll have to see what it's all about. They may not have given him enough room, Dave. In college, you've got to give a cushion to the man catching the ball. And that's what Mike Nettles is saying. He's pleading his case right now. Memphis State is uh, pretty happy, so I think that's the call. That's exactly the call. You know, a lot of times if the ball's punted away from you, the coach says, run into the man coming down the field. The Let's hear it. On the kicking team, five-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, Bob McLaughlin's never wrong, right? Let's take a look one, at it. One, no room at all for Nettles. That's right. Mike's got to have room to catch the ball. The man is right on him before the ball ever gets there. Actually makes contact. It was Corey Dowden who made the contact. Big break for Memphis State, so that'll scoot the ball up to their own 31. First down and 10. Charles Wilson split left. Martin is split right. You've got the eye formation. And in for the Tigers at fullback now is Bill Moody. Well, the give is to John Norman, who sees his first action at tailback, and he slants off that left side. A bit of a power sweep, but not a whole lot there. Leroy Brown cut him down along with Lenzer Burton. He may have gotten two yards. It'll be second down and eight. There's the stats on John Norman for this year. He has potential, but he hasn't really broken one yet. That, exactly. John Norman is a durable little back, but a small back. He gets you five yards. Not great breakaway speed, but a good, intelligent ball carrier. I like those new Memphis State helmets. Now they get a good close-up on Tim Jones. It looks like the Seahawks on there with a tiger. Jones to pass. Looks, and he is nearly picked off. He was trying to go to Ray Kraft. And it was nearly knocked away by Thurston Harrison. And we've called his name a lot on defense tonight. Boy, Harrison got his hands up there. He tipped the ball. It hit Ray Kraft's hands and ricocheted off. And I think Mitchell Price nearly got his hands on the ball. Harrison played good defense, though. He was right around the football, and he distracted Ray. Third down. 
Eight yards to go for Jones. Play action. He got some room. Now there's pressure. He unloads it. And it is caught by Moody at the 50. Moody to the 40. He's off to the races, but he's not going to beat the defender down to the 30-yard line. It was Richard Harvey who finally caught Bill Moody. There is a flag back by the original line of scrimmage, and it comes in the direction where holds are usually called. It's a clip against Memphis State. Not the hold, but the clip will still back it off. And it really nullifies a great play, Bob. Oh, great, great play. We knew Bill Moody could be a receiver for a number of years. He had a great catch at Virginia Tech a few years ago, turned it into a 75-yard touchdown run. You're talking about a man that's 260 pounds here. I believe I saw the clip. We're clipping on the offense. Still second down. It was Reed Bennett on the clip, unfortunately. Look at Moody go, and now he runs out of gas, and Harvey, who didn't, corrals him down, but it's off or not. It'll be third down and a whole bunch. Charlie Bailey doesn't like that call. He, he did knock him from behind. It was more of a push with the hands. It wasn't a real violent sort of a hit. Third and 25. Martin on the left side. Wilson on the left, I should say. Martin on the right. One man in the slot, and Jones will pass the football. And he goes over the middle, and Martin didn't he pay the price. Mitchell Price knocked him flat. Norman didn't have a chance anyway. It'll be fourth down and fight deep in his own territory. He's going to have to put the football away. Boy, what a turn of events. I tell you what, I mean, it's a game of inches. It's a game of miles. Watch the collision here. Norman almost gets it. He's extended, and boom. Mitchell Price says, you ain't holding on. Mitchell Price is back to... Try to collect this punt. Maybe Memphis State can pay him back. Fights kick a fair catch called for by Price at the 44-yard line of Tulane. So they will have good field position once again. The Greenway down 3-0. Memphis State moved the football once again. It was a penalty that did him in. Boy, that's what Charlie is preach, preach, preach every week. Don't make the mistakes that take you out of the ball game. Watch the fumbles. Watch the penalties. Prime example right there, instead of having the ball down to Tulane 30, Tulane's now got the ball and on the move. First down and 10, and we've got a whistle as they start to set things up. It's an official's timeout. They'll sort things out. Hey, you've been watching your channel 30 lately. You know, Bob Wynn, that Morton Downey is back in Memphis five nights a week on WMK WTV Channel 30. He's rude, he's warm-hearted, he's arrogant, he's funny, and he's the most talked about host on TV. Watch the Mountain Do Morton Downey Jr. show weeknights at 7 only on Channel 30. I, I thought he was hyping himself and George Lapidus on the, on the WREC. Hey, don't, don't forget that show now. 5.30 to 7 on AM60 every night. Here's the pitch. Michael Pierce tries to get outside, and he is tripped up, and it was Perkins again. Oh, and Nico Perkins, the senior from Mitchell High School, three-year letterman, and a decathlete shows why. He just did a dive that time, and Pierce will pick up a couple of yards, but he would have had a lot more. That's two big hits now by Nico Perkins. Nico got his hand on his shoelaces, like they like to say, barely pulled him down. That's a great play by a great athlete. Second down, on seven. Jones all day over the middle. He's got his man. It's the fullback, Hunter. Short of the first down. It'll be third down and about two. Spot the ball at the Memphis State 47-yard line. The Memphis State linebackers are just staying home right in the middle with that underneath coverage. Carlos Hollowell and Damon Young just camped out. Flipped the ball over the line to the back. They were right there to make the tackle. Damon Young officially gets credit for the tackle. Third down and two. And... This is a good number for Memphis State every time Tulane's had this situation. They haven't been able to cash in. In motion, one man left side. The give is to Pierce the tailback, and it looks like he gets across the 45 to the 44, and he picks up the first down. That time, Pierce just followed the blocking of Kent Lattimore and Jim Bishop, a couple of seniors on the right side. Scott Rumley and Damon Young made the stop. Scott Rumley, the sophomore linebacker there on the left side, who uh, was a transfer from SMU. So a first down for Tulane and Terrence Jones. He's got two men split left side. Maurice Brown and McIntosh. To the air he goes. Over the middle. It's blocked by Damon Young and nearly 
picked off by the young man from Alabama. Boy, I tell you what, if the defense didn't didn't uh, perform last week up to par, they're sure putting on a stellar performance in the first half tonight. Damon Young does a tremendous job, reads it as a pass play all the way, drops back into the coverage, gets his hand up, bats the ball away when the man was running wide open. Great nice play. Last year, the leading defender this year, second on the team, 25 tackles, two for loss. Coming into this game, he had one block pass coming in. Now he's got two. Second down and 10 yards to go, and Jones will put it in the air again. He's got his man with Pierce. And Pierce close to the first down. Inside the Memphis State 35 to about the 34-yard line. Mike Nettles, again, the safety valve, makes the stop, and it looks like they spotted good enough for the first down. Looks like a little pick play here, Dave. You watch a receiver coming across the middle, catches Damon Young, and holds him up as he's trailing Pierce. Good call. Pierce tries to turn it up, but Mike Nettles will come into your picture. Knock him down, but good effort by Pierce. Just about picks up the first down on the far side. They are checking it with the chains. Terrence Jones goes over to lobby his case. And it is a first down. There's Murray Armstrong and Charlie Bailey. They were talking to the officials, too, a little bit, trying to sway things their way, but the chains don't lie. Charlie Bailey in his third year at Memphis State. Last year, 5-5-1. Five, five and one. And we want to say hello to Deshaun Darnell, the WMKW sales manager. I know he's under the weather. We can't wait for him to come back. We miss him. Jones rolls on the right side. Here's Pierce. Yes, oh, the His second big play tonight, an interception, and now a fumble recovery at the 29-yard line. He had a pickoff deep in his own territory once before, and now he comes up with another big one. Boy, it's a game of big plays. You're looking for your defense to find the turnover each time out. Once again, stringing it out, you see Marlon Brown in the picture. Comes over and makes the big hit, the senior All-American. Eddie Moore corrals the ball. Don't let it get out of bounds. Atta boy, atta boy. Marlon Brown made the hit. Eddie Moore picked up the loose football. If he didn't get it, Damon Young sure would have. And Memphis State now with a pickskin. First down and 10 at the 29. Jones has the eye formation with two men split left and one man right side. Jones will sprint out right side. He's going long and it's nearly picked off. Not a good pass at all by Jones that time. Vincent Momore right in the way. Almost picked that thing off clean. Tim stomping his feet on the carpet, Dave, like he hung his feet up. I think right as he got ready to plant and throw, he hung a foot on the carpet. And the ball, I mean, he wasn't even close to his receiver. Hit the Tulane man right in the side, and fortunately the guy didn't expect the ball to be there. What a difference tonight. Memphis State just keeps throwing the football. We thought we'd see a bunch of running based on the first three games. Uh-uh. Tigers have come up with a wide-open offense. Move the football one time and make three zip. Here's the run, and this is Gerald White. He bounces outside. And he turns on the speed, but he's tripped up after a gain of about seven or eight yards. Big play that time by Rick Crozier, who came over just when it looked like Gerald was going to make a big play. Tell you what, what a, what a great thing to see Gerald White back out here on the playing field running like the Gerald White we used to know. It was a year ago against yep. Tulane when he had 101 yards in the first half of the ball game and scored two touchdowns and had the devastating knee injury. He is back. He may be just a half step away from where he used to be, but he's come in each week. We've seen him tonight. I tell you what, Charlie Bailey is rotating the backs around. We've seen a different, we, this is the third time we've had the ball. It's the third different set of running backs. He's used Xavier Crawford at tailback. He's used John Norman at tailback. Back to Gerald White now who started the game. Let's keep the fresh people in there. That's what he's going to try to do tonight. You see White's stats. It was, as you said, a year ago when he got injured that he had that big 100-yard first half. Now, the injured player was Reed Bennett. You see him getting up slowly. And the training staff, Eddie Kanner, all the other fine, Rod Redmond, all those fine people really taking care. It looks like Reed will be okay. Uh, bet you anything he's back in this game before too long. Third down and a long two yards for Memphis State. Two men split wide left side. Martin and Kraft. In the I formation, the pitch to Gerald White, a big defensive play for Tulane by Lonnie Marks, the 6'2 junior from here in New Orleans. He had 51 tackles last year, and a big one there. 
Boy, Tulane reads this to perfection. They know exactly what to expect here. They're loaded to that side. Lonnie came untouched. Perhaps Gerald White tackles him for the loss. Somebody missed an assignment there. Fourth down and about eight. Jeff Fight in the pocket. Nice catch at his own 25. And the kick angles toward the sideline and takes a Memphis State hop. Not a bad punt at all for Jeff Fight that time. Throw the 38 yards. And Tulane will be backed up to their own 34. There's the good looking sophomore. The only true freshman who played last year for Charlie Bennett. The only true freshman is this year, Xavier Crawford, the only true freshman that's been in. But I will say this, Dave, this is a tremendous freshman class. Some of them have traveled with the team. Some of them are back in Memphis. Expect about seven or eight of these guys to really play a lot next year. Memphis State's defense has really controlled everything in this quarter. Jones will pass again. He's got his man. Here's a big one tackle. He's across the 45 to about the 47-yard line. That's enough for a first down, a pickup of about 12 there. Carlos Hollowell had him by the back of the jersey. Pierce breaks free. They're running the exact same pattern they did last week, throwing every down to the backside of the backfield. You don't think they missed Mark Zeno from last year? You better believe they do. Reggie DuVos, by the way, gets the credit on that tackle. Ball on the 47-yard line. First down at 10, ball at the 47. One man split left. One man more goes in motion on the left side, and Jones again to the air. Good time. He's got his man. It's incomplete. He went for Jerome McIntosh, and McIntosh had some room, but that ball was just poorly thrown by Terrence Jones, and he's a little upset with himself. Eddie Moore was in the general vicinity, but if that thing had been on the money, it was a completion. Jerome McIntosh, a converted quarterback, came to Tulane down here in hopes of uh, throwing the football, much as Terrence Jones has. Converted last year, his first touchdown catch in Memphis against Memphis State. So second down and 10 from the 47 of Tulane. One man in motion on the right side. Flags are down in the general vicinity of Hull. Jones lets it go, and he's going to Pierce. And the Memphis State 30, Pierce off to the races. And Nettles and Randall Cooper knock him out of bounds at the 11-yard line, but now we got to go back to see what that flag is all about. Randall Cooper got the angle along with Nettles, as we mentioned. Cooper, that fine transfer from Wichita State. The preliminary motion against Tulane. Let's see if we can spot it, Bob, on the replay from the end zone. From the end zone camera, Dave, I don't see it. I, I can't really tell where they, it must have been one of the receivers outside. Jones scrambles around. Can't give him that kind of time. Boy, he's so dangerous when he gets on the move. Boy, did you see the way he threw off the wrong foot on that and still completed it with zip? Threw back across the field, off the wrong foot with his shoulders squared towards the Memphis State bench. Of course, Pierce, you know, he is really tough to cover. You got linebacker coverage on a very quick back. You got to keep the containment on Terrence Jones. You don't worry so much about Pierce coming out of the backfield in the run, but boy, he finds a way to get open as a receiver. He and Hunter line up in the backfield. You see a receiver right and a receiver left, and Jones has big pressure by Marlon Brown and gets away. Now he's going to try to make something happen, but he can't because of the great defense by Memphis State, and I think it was Tony Manning, I believe, yeah. Dave. When you talk about transfers, you talk about uh, Rumley coming from SMU. We picked up two other good ones in Randall Cooper, the defensive back from Wichita State, and Tony Manning. The now that was a good back. swap, huh? That, that program good. goes out, and you get two great ones. I tell you what, we sure like to have them for a couple more years. Tony Manning has got tremendous speed for a down lineman. Not great size, but he runs exceptionally well. It was the backup to James Cribbs. Cribbs got hurt. And he does the job. Jones again with plenty of time. Got some pressure. He unloads the football. Nearly picked up by David Young again. Thrown too hard. And that'll do it. That's the end of the first quarter. Memphis State's defense dominated. And Biff Butler with a field goal from 37. And there's the score. Charlie Bailey's got his game face on. He's not happy with a 3-0 lead, but Memphis State fans back at home, I'm sure are. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast on WMKW Channel 30. You see the good news. Memphis State, after one quarter, leads 3-0, and they're about to get the football back to start the second quarter. It's fourth down and a whole bunch. 17 to Lane at their own 39-yard line. 
will send Micah News back to punt. Mike Nettles back at his own 23 to get the football. Memphis defense has really been superb, and they almost blocked that punt. Nettles will let it come down, and it'll go out of bounds at about their own 26-yard line. Take advantage, by the way, if you've got a chance of the 88 closeout savings in the thousands of dollars at the Rivermen of old, Prior, Prior Regal, Mary, and Hudson Rook. That's the 88 closeout savings. Thousands can be saved. So head on out to see the Rivermen of old, Prior, Regal, Mary, and Hudson Rook. First down and 10, Memphis State. At their own 26-yard line, their defense has been the story. A couple of big plays from Jones to Wilson have allowed Memphis State and John Butler to take a 3-0 lead. That time, Memphis State pounds the ball up the middle. Coming over in a hurry for Tulane was Jay Rink and Richard Sauter to make the stop. A minimal gain of two yards that time. Well, wouldn't you love to have a guy like Wayne Pryor be able to stay on your team for 10 or 12 years with the pros? What a great, great young man, and what a tremendous player he is. Pryor, number 44. That was Gerald White, number 22. Second down, eight yards to go. Jones will pass against. Big rush, and they go the opposite way for a screen, and Tulane smelled it out, and Pryor's going to get caught for a loss all the way back at the 14-yard line. There was Lenzer Burton, a sophomore from Boca Raton, Florida, their second leading tackler, who made the stop. Now, Memphis State has tried a lot of screens in this game, and Tulane's starting to catch up. Remember what we talked about earlier, Dave? From the 20s in and the 20s out, Tulane changes their defense. Here they come, outside backer, strong safety in there on the blitz. They've got it smelled out. Well, Jones did make the right play, but Tulane... Now wise, we'll see what Charlie Bailey can adjust to. Third down, 20 yards to go. Jones with all day this time. He's going long. He wants Wilson, and it's overthrown. Good play by Jones. There wasn't any room to spare for Wilson. Good coverage. Price was back there along with Mark Thornhill. And so the Tulane crowd, and there's about 30,000 here at the Superdome, gets into this football game as their defense comes alive, and Jeff Fight's going to have to pump the football away from his own one-yard line. Well, the Memphis State defense is going to have to rise to the occasion and return the favor. We need a big punt by Jeff Fight here to get out of uh, out of the hole here in the back of your lane up. Snap is perfect to fight, and he gets the football off. Well, it comes down near midfield and high in the air. Down at the Tiger 48-yard line. So once again, Tulane will have great field position. You know, while we've got a moment, we want to remind you that the live broadcast of Memphis State University football is the exclusive property of WMKW-TV and Memphis State. Any use or transmission of this game without the written consent of Memphis State University, WMKW-TV, or creative sports marketing is prohibited. Concern Memphis State sideline. First down and 10 at the 48 yard line of the Tigers, and Jones pitches it out to Hunter, the fullback, and Hunter gets across the 45 to the 44, and then he meets super soft Carlos Hollowell. Hollowell slammed Hunter to the ground, but he did get about five. Raleigh Egypt product, Dave. Uh Played a lot last year, had a tremendous game in Memphis State's win over Alabama in 1987. He and Reggie Dubose doing the job tonight. Amazing. The guy steps in, he's the leading tackler on the team as a sophomore. There's Hunter again, and Hunter gets to about the 41-yard line. They keep trying the right side of that line. They like to follow the seniors, Lattimore and Bishop. It'll be short of the first down. Good defense, really, by Memphis State that time. Reggie DuBose came up and made a nice hit. It'll be third down and one. We got to remind the folks that at halftime, you'll see the great Memphis State marching band. We'll have some words with Memphis State Athletic Director Charles Cavaniero, and then we'll also talk with Chuck Blanchett, the new Tulane Athletic Director, about their basketball program. That all comes your way at halftime. In the meantime, third down one. Hunter's got some room on the right side. They continue to run on the right side of that line. 
and he gets the first down. Ball will be spotted about the 37-yard line of Memphis State. It was Eddie Moore who came up from the secondary to make the stop. Entirely different defensive front here for Memphis State. Charlie's been running in a different defensive line on every other play. We've got uh, Rick Fredette in at nose tackle, and they're coming right at Rodney Lewis, number 56. So first down and 10 for Jones, one back. And he gets the football. And he gets inside the 35 to about the 34. A pickup of about three yards that time. That was Melvin Adams, their fullback, who is the leading ball carrier on this team. He came in tonight, 190, 30, 193 yards on 38 carries, just one touchdown. So it sets up second down. And that's seven yards to go. And then uh, Jones again to Ron Hunter. And he puts him down to the right side. Down to the 20. The 18-yard line. And uh, Eddie Moore again, along with Jeff Harris, the redshirt freshman linebacker on the stop. Boy, they've been talking about Melvin Adams at fullback. I don't know why this kid hasn't been playing every game. That's a great move there, huh? He's had over 1,200 yards rushing in his career here, and they put him on the bench. Maybe they're trying to uh, improve his play a little, but he looks super tonight. He made a great lateral cut to the left side and opened things up for him. First down and 10 at the 18-yard line of Memphis State. Jones goes back to pass. Looking on the right side, Smith on the coverage, and it goes over the head of Tulane's wide receiver. Melvin Ferdinand. He did get behind the Memphis State defender, that's Steve Smith, the sophomore from Texarkana. But the ball was overthrown, and I believe Terrence Jones did because of Smith's good coverage. Well, I'll tell you what, there's nobody on this field any faster than Steve Smith, I can promise you that. Second down and 10 from the 18. Jones will pass it again. Some pressure is dangerous here. Is in. The touchdown. He started the single incomplete, and then he rolled it. A two-lane touchdown. That is Maurice Nelson, the flanker back. Randall Cooper was near him. And we're going to have to see this one on instant replay to believe it. That, that's a fact, Dave. I sure thought he was out of the back of the end zone. They signaled him out at first and then no. I guess that's the kind of cause maybe you get it home. Let's see here if we can pinpoint where his feet came down. Jeff Harrison Dubois after Jones. Throws against his body again. You call it. He got his toes down. I think the question is now, did he control the ball? Did he have control when he had his uh, when he went out of bounds? I think the referee anticipated he wouldn't hold on, and he did. The extra point is perfect. And so Tulane takes their first lead of the night. An impressive drive. It's 7-3. Back in a moment. Well, Tulane answers Memphis State's field goal with a touchdown here, a long pass, and a beautiful catch near the end zone, and we'll get another chance to look at that in just a second. In the meantime, Tulane will kick the football up. James Toney will kick it off. And back deep, Charles Wilson from Memphis State. Charles will take it at the five. Up the middle, and he's got some room. And like a rocket, he's through. He's got one man to beat. It's the kicker. Wilson to the 40, the 30. He's not going to get caught. Wilson celebrating already. Touchdown, Memphis State. 95 yards. 14, or rather 10, 7, Memphis State. Tell you what, what a great move last week in Louisville. Little William Arnold had been our kick returner. We felt like he was a little hesitant. They came with Charles Wilson. He averaged almost 30 yards of return against the Cardinals last week. Now breaks one 95 yards for a touchdown. Well, if there was any question about Memphis State being flat or having the ability to come back on the road, it's answered now. Wilson, after a tremendous catch by Tulane, Answers with a 95-yard return up the middle, and then he put the Rockets on. He just beat the kicker to the corner of the end zone. He was celebrating at the 20. It was never in doubt. Here's the extra point by Butler. It's up. It's good. And it's 10-7. Memphis State, what a great turnaround. If you're just joining us now, the last 10 seconds have been thrilling. Watch this play from Terrence Jones. 
in the end of the end zone. The pass to Maurice Nelson. Is he in or is he out? Yeah, he's got it. He's in. But what does Memphis State do to follow that up? They don't give up. Charles Wilson up the middle. Take it away, Bob Wynn. Boy, I tell you what, the little burner from Tallahassee, Florida. Charles Wilson can really fly. Charlie Bailey says over and over and over, he's our guy, the big play man, the third longest kickoff in Memphis State history. Give Coming him back six. to live action, and Michael Pierce had designs on doing the same exact thing. He made a cut to the middle at the 25, but Jeff Harris was there, and the freshman said, uh-uh, slammed him to the turf at the 26. That's where Terrence Jones will take over, and again, he's down a field goal. 10-7 Tigers. What a thrilling return by Charles Wilson. We had kind of been speculating all along that this could be the game where two teams really wake up, really turn it on, and it's been very exciting thus far. But just two great athletes, both receivers made big plays. First it was Maurice Nelson, then it was Charles Wilson, and Jones wants to go to the air again. He's got his man over the middle. That was Nelson again, and Damon Young hit him as soon as he touched the football. It'll be a pickup of about seven yards, second down and three, spotted at the Green Wave 32-yard line. Kind of a mismatch there, Damon Young on little uh, Maurice Nelson. He's probably the littlest man on the field, but he's really tough and a great set of hands on him. There's the stats on Terrence Jones. They've thrown 15 times in this game already. There's a running play, which is a surprise in this game, almost by either team. Not much up the middle, maybe a couple that'll be short of the first down. That was Melvin Adams, their starting fullback. On the stop that time, Torrey Epps, the nose guard, who's, by the way, I think the second leading tackler on the team, but has been pretty silent tonight because they haven't really run the football that much. Well, I'll tell you what, though, Torrey does a tremendous job of just stuffing up the middle of that line, a great prototype nose guard. Pressure on him this play, third down and one. Again, they give it to the first. And Adams has the first down and a whole bunch more. Marlon Brown catches him from behind, but not before he picks about seven yards up. He spot that ball at the 43-yard line. Nine minutes and five seconds to go in the first half. Memphis State 10, Tulane 7. It's been a thriller so far. We've got some great halftime festivities coming up. The Memphis State Band, Charlie Cavanero, and Chip Lanchick, the new athletic director at Tulane. Jones will air it up again. Fakes once, he's going long. And it is caught by McIntosh, and down he goes at the seven-yard line of Memphis State. The Tiger defensive secondary went for the bait by Terrence Jones. He pump faked it, and then Glenn Rogers had a catch. McIntosh from behind. Well, we've gone from a tremendous defensive struggle in the first quarter to all-out pure offense here in the second. Jones double clutches, airs it out down the sidelines. McIntosh streaks by Randall Cooper, hauls the ball in. Glenn Rogers Jr. catches up with him and drives him out of bounds deep in Memphis State territory. Well, you see it 50 yards in both those games. We talked about Zeno not being there, but both those catches have been great by two different receivers on their fingertips. Michael Pierce, nothing there, but he bounces across the three, five-yard line of the three. Oh, man, it looked like he was battled up for maybe a loss, and he made a nice cut and just bounced off a couple of the Memphis State defensive linemen. Again, Glenn Rogers on the stop for the Tigers. Great second effort there by Michael Pierce. He's playing on a bad wheel, and he's coming limping out of the ball game. Rodney Hunter's going to replace him. Into the ball game, another wide receiver for Tulane. Melvin Ferdinand, who's got a reception in this game already. Eight minutes and five seconds to go in the first half. The Tigers by 3 10 7. And Hunter on the carry, and Hunter is stacked up for a loss of about a yard. How many times have we seen that Memphis State front wall rise to the occasion, Dave? Once again, they're doing it. Tony Manning, Tory Epps, Greg Ross. But give Reggie DeBose the credit on that one. Well, I think the deal is there that the defensive front submarines down, takes down that front wall of opposition, and then your backs come up, your linebackers to make the stop. So that, that's a loss now, Bobby. Of a yard and a half, it'll be third down from the five. Oh. 
Doug with a lot of time, and it's on the ground. He was looking for McIntosh, and good defense by Randall Cooper in his face, and the Tigers' defense is held, and on will come the field goal unit for Tulane. Now, if there is a weakness offensively on this Tulane ball club, it's field goals. Four of nine this year. Todd Wiggins usually does the place kicking. He'll do it again. He's three out of six from inside the 39 and four out of nine all told. It's not a great kicking unit at all. There's the snap kick is down and it is good. And we are tied. Seven minutes, 15 seconds to go in this first half. And uh, it is all knotted up at 10 all. Dave, you know, the, the Memphis State defense, to their credit right there, give up the big play, and that's what we try to guard against is a big play. But they bent, but they didn't break. They got down, they bowed up their necks at the goal line. The line dug in, stopped the Tulane run, stopped the pass, forced them into the field goal, did not give up the seven. I got an idea for you. Why don't you try being a card-carrying Tiger fan with the new Memphis State University Visa card from Union Planners? Carrying the card shows your support for MSU and helps feed the Tigers alumni and scholarship funds. Apply for your Tiger Visa card today at any Union Planners branch or call 523-6737. Lightning strike twice in the same quarter. There's the two-lane green wave drive. Nine plays, 69 yards. About three minutes in the clock and the 22-yard field goal by Wiggins. Charles Wilson is deep at his own five. He's in the middle. Let's see if they kick the football to him. Last time, he went 95 yards. They're going to try their luck again. This time, Wilson from the one. Nothing there. He gets cramped. Big hit. We've got a flag on the play, Dave. They may have grabbed Charles by the face mask there, either late or maybe jumped in there and speared him a little. Corey Dowden made the hit. Let's listen in. Good eyes. It is the face mask on the preliminary call. They're going to walk it off. We'll see if it's inadvertent or are they going to walk it off 15. Face mask, five-yard penalty, first down. Just inadvertent, so they'll just... Walk it off five. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah, on the left side. Now it's got now it's got his hand hung up in the mask. Yeah, Walking it's hung up right around. there. Yeah. I don't think the uh, defender agreed quite wholeheartedly. Here's the X man, and the X man has his feet taken off from under him one more time. That's the tremendous defensive linebacker Richard Harvey. Hey, if I'm seeing one thing from inexperience. I'm watching indecision. Xavier wants to make a move, but it's just instead of using his speed, he's a little hesitant. Well, that's a completely different game from him now from when he was in high school. These guys are as fast as he is and as strong, but he is a tremendous, tremendous talent. He loses two on that second down at 12. Jones is going to try to keep this thing. He's trying to make something happen. Flags all over the place coming from the Memphis State defensive backfield and Jones is going to have to eat it for a loss good play by Clay McCall the linebacker there it's a hold on Memphis State we'll see if Tulane takes it if they don't it'll be third down in about 13 Tim Jones I thought wanted to pass so there was no Bunny open at all, then decided to run, tried to cut it back. He asked a lot of his offensive linemen at that time and uh, would have to finally eat the football, but a good choice. Didn't panic and throw the football away. And Tulane's going to take the walk-up, so it'll be second down. Holding on the offense, still second down. Yeah, it's still second down and about 22 yards to go. That'll give Tim Jones a couple of more chances to throw the football. And I, I really like Tim's poise so far tonight. He has thrown one bad pass that could have been picked off. Otherwise, everything has been very deliberate. Remember, Jones injured has that neck brace. You saw it behind his helmet. And this one's straight ahead, and there's a big hole for Bill Moody. 
And Moody's going to get about 13 yards on that play. Lenzer Burton, the strong safety, comes up and makes the stop for Tulane. This surprised everybody. Remember, we've talked about Tulane changing up their scheme when we're inside the 20. They wall it off. If the pressure's coming from the outside, the quick draw to Moody. See, number 90 was caught up in the blitz. Moody just rambles. He's a, he's a real load to bring down at 260 pounds. That thing was good for 18. It's third down and four. And Jones going to pass the football. Nearly trips. He's got some room. He's going to run for it. And Jones has the first down at the 35. Heads up play, Tim Jones. Tim Jones scrambling. I tell you what, very unselfish play going on out there. Watching Xavier Crawford on his plate. He's out here chicken fighting in front of Tim, trying to throw a block. Timmy scrambling around. Great pursuit by Tulane's quick, quick defense. But Jones can really turn it on. That's why he's such a threat for Memphis State. And he's no dummy. He gets out of bounds when he has to. First down, 10 yards to go at the 35-yard line. The junior showed quick feet there and a wise decision, even pump fake, to make sure he'd get the first down. Elgin Perkins on the run. Elgin Perkins won't get a whole lot. That time, Tulane's defense really stacked them up. They, they are so young, Bobby, up front. They play that 3-4, and Perry Leslie, the nose guard, a sophomore, makes the stop. He got help from a junior on one side, Richard Sauter, and Andy Treadway, a sophomore on the other side. So their front line goes sophomore, sophomore, junior. Well, they are quite young, and they're not really as big as many teams. That's why they use a lot of stunts, a lot of different formations. They come with a blitz, and a lot of different coverages for Tulane. Perkins got two, so it's second down and eight. Jones going to throw the football again. He looks, he looks, and he has to throw that football away. Good coverage. He wanted to go to Martin, but nothing doing. Lonnie Martz was over there. He also got some help from uh, Thurston Harrison. That guy's been everywhere tonight. Yeah. The defensive signals being flashed in. And there's Xavier Crawford. Right, defensive signal. There's the offensive signal being flashed in. Yeah, that's Palmer Hostler, the running back coach, and he signals the plays as they come down from the press box. Third down and eight from the 37-yard line of the Tigers. And it's Moody straight ahead. They tried to fool Tulane like they did a little bit earlier. This time... It'll only pick up about two yards. So from the 40, it'll be fourth down at about five, and the Tigers will kick the football away. That time, Sean McLeakin came in and made the stop for the green wave. Jeff Fight is back to punt Mitchell Price deep to receive. Fight all day as they set up a return. Their catch for a call for by Price at the 15-yard line. Super punt that time by Jeff Fight. It's all tied, 10 all. This is second down and 10 over the middle. Nearly picked off. Jones was looking for Rodney Hunter, the fullback, who curled in by the 26-yard line. Here was the first play, a little Utah pass that goes incomplete. Now, that's an incompleted pass. It's not a fumble, and what a shame because Adrian Herod would have had the ball at the five-yard line. A lot of credit on that first down play to nose tackle Rick Burdett from Massachusetts. Boy, he sniffed that play out, grabbed the uh, receiver, and just, and just took him down. So Memphis State's defense now forces Tulane third down and 10. Jones with a lot of time, flares the ball off, and Hunter just took his eyes off the football. Boy, I think Rodney Hunter thought he had a touchdown there. He looked away from the ball. He looked upfield to see it was wide open, and the ball just greens off his fingers out of bounds. He may have heard the footsteps of Tyrone Betters, who was coming out there in a hurry, but I don't know if Betters would have caught him. Big break for Memphis State, fourth down and 10 yards to go. They come. They come. The green wave will have to butt the football away. Mike Anus will stand at his goal line. Mike Nettles at the 48 of Memphis State. Return is on. That's a good boot by Noose. Nettles from his own 35. Can't do a whole lot. Dances to the 39-yard line. And with 3.49 to go, Memphis State with fair field position, maybe to drive down, use up some of that clock, and if you can't get the seven, 
Settle for the three and take a 13-10 lead at halftime. We're knotted up right now at 10 all. Tell you what, the last series was a very important series for Memphis State. We had the ball back at the 10. Bill Moody breaks the big play at the middle. We get it out of the hole and force them deep. We're back now to where we were when we punted. Memphis State with three receivers in on this play. And Jones buys himself some time to play action. Here's Pryor. Not a whole lot of room. One yard to the 40-41 yard line. Richard Harvey and Lenzer Burton not fooled at all. And Pryor getting up slowly. He's not getting up at all. Now he is. That's one guy you cannot afford to lose. He's all right. Hey, get ready for Freddie. Who? Freddie. The man of your dreams, Freddy Krueger, is coming to WMKW TV Channel 30 in Freddy's Nightmares. That starts October the 8th at 10.30. You, you want to get scared? Watch Freddy Krueger. He's back. Second down. A long eight yards to go for the Tigers. Again, three wide receivers, two split on the right side for the hour. Jones, play action again, wants to go long. Everybody covered, he scrambles. He's in trouble now. Good block, and Jones has some room up the middle. He only picks up about four yards to the 44-yard line, but it was sure dramatic before Lenzer Burton finally dropped him. But I really like the way Jones uses his head. Watch this block by number 51, Clark Stevenson, a redshirt freshman from Elliston High School in Memphis. I believe he peels back here when Tim reverses his field. Watch this block. Boom. Damn. Oh, what a hit. I mean, he just laid one on Andrew Treadwell. Great block allowed Tim to turn a big loss into a pretty good game. It was only three yards, third down and five. From the 44, long count by Jones. And that may be delay a game. The clock says zero. Game, offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Tim could see the clock running down. They have him beneath the uh, goalposts. That's beneath the goalposts, but directly in line with the goalposts behind him. Uh, Charlie Bailey not too happy at all with that one. Kim Jones saw blitz there. He saw the, the uh, Jelaine linebackers dancing up into the line of scrimmage. He tried to audible at the line. It is noisy in here. They didn't pick up the play there for the delay. Third down and 10 now. And a big hole on the right side and a first down for Moody. Bill Moody with his second big run. He had an 18-yard gain the last time. This one's going to go for about 12. It was Mitchell Price, the free safety, who made the play. And big Bill Moody really pounded him out. They're, that defensive backs have got to be saying, I don't really want to tackle this tank. Bill Moody is a big, big man who can really run, and he doesn't try to finesse and go around you. He would rather run right through you. A minute 50 to go in two-lane territory at the 48, first down and 10. Jones with plenty of time. Looking on the left side for Wilson. It's under thrown, and I think it's picked off. It is. At the 15-yard line, Mitchell Price. And he paid the price as he gets shaken up. Wilson had a step on the defender, but the ball was a little under thrown. Gutsy call on the first and 10. Memphis State gambles for it all. And Mitchell Price cashed in. Charles Wilson just looking for that seam in the zone, goes up over top, but they just took it away from him. They had good double coverage. Price is still down. A minute 41 to go in the half, tied at 10 all. And now, Louisiana Jones will see what kind of magic he can work. What a game this has been. Last year it was a thriller, one of the best Memphis State games I've ever seen at the Liberty Bowl, 45-36 the final. And this year, we've seen big plays offensively and defensively. Hard to believe this is a one and two team against a two and one team. Both ball clubs have looked sharp here tonight. Dave, last year there was over 900 yards of total offense in the ball game between Memphis State and Tulane. This year it starts off as a defensive struggle and now it's turned into a horse race in the second quarter. We really haven't had a chance to mention Greg Davis. He's a first year head coach, obviously two and one. He was the assistant head coach to Mac Brown here last year. He coached the receivers 
also coached quarterbacks. He was at Texas A&M for a number of years, worked, in fact, with Jackie Sherrill, so he's worked with some great ones in Sherrill and Mac Brown, and now he gets his first chance as the head guy. And his troops will see what they can do with a minute and 41 to go at their own 15. We should mention that at the end of the ball game, Bob and I will choose the Budweiser player of the game. I guess at this point, have to go with Charles Wilson, huh? 95-yard touchdown return. Jones to the air. It's batted down! Marlon Brown, I think, batted the football down. Jones picked it back up, but the space dog almost picked it off. Boy, that would have been an immediate six. Watch the athletic ability of Marlon Brown. Here he comes. Gets up, bats the ball, and I, I believe Marlon took, takes his eyes off there. I think he thought Terrence Jones caught that ball in the air after he batted it. That's why he came after him again. But what instinct, what a heads-up play. I thought Terrence Jones was almost going to catch that. Second down and 10 from the 15. to run that shy. Well, now they are. They go conservative and run the football on right tackle. Not a whole lot to the 18-yard line. It'll be third down, about seven yards to go. Melvin Adams, I believe, on the carry that time. I think the Tulane philosophy, Dave, is you run the ball to set up the pass. On occasion, you've got to mix in a few runs. Terrence Jones is throwing probably three out of every four downs. So occasionally, you're going to catch the defense napping, maybe, and that's what they're hopeful of anyway, maybe break a big gainer. Mark is taken down, just a minute five to go in this first half. Third down, seven. Jones scrambles. He's got some more, but he's got the first down. Trips up. The turf bug got him at the 36. He could have got another five or ten on that one. Clock continues to run. Well, it stopped while they moved the chains. 53 seconds to go in the half. Tremendous, tremendous play by Terrence Jones. You think you've got him contained back there? He pops it right up the middle, eludes a couple of tackles, picks up the first down and more. Ball spotted at the 37, and Jones this time will go to the air. Again, pressure, he's forced out, still wants to throw. Uh-uh, the Tigers get it. Torrey Epps and Tony Manning really applying the pressure. They're chasing him all over the field tonight. Manning hurt himself on that one. He limps to the sidelines. And a timeout is called by Tulane. They stop the clock with 35 seconds to go in the half. There's a good look. And Manning, he's had two big plays in this game. There's a good shot of a good-looking quarterback. Andy Whitwell, the two-minute man. He lost the strength coach. Sort of shadows him out a little bit. Yeah, Dean's a pretty big guy. You know, Dave, I tell you what, playing on this turf is pretty tough. You know, we're very, very fortunate at the Liberty Bowl to play on natural grass. Wayne Pryor's problem when he went out of the ball game, when they tackled him, they held his arms down and he hit his head on the turf. I saw Ron Medlin indicating to the doctor that they had, uh, so to speak, rung his bell as he went out. Same with, with Pierce on the interception. He came down flat on his back, his helmet smacked onto the field. I think he had a ringer himself. This is a very, very hard surface. They do have a cushion underneath it. It's a very flat surface. You know, we're used to a crown yeah. on the field. This is very flat here, and that's why on occasion you see our guys tripping some. No crown at all. Well, that lady doesn't care. She sees herself on TV. You know, that no crown makes for big speed and bigger collisions. And uh, you'll find more injuries that way. No, no question about it. This is an interesting place to play. I mean, there's no wind. It's just a, a factor of speed all the way around. And Memphis State not used to it, getting prepared in a hurry. Just one practice last night. Jones. One and a row is going to go for it all. And Andy Moore picks it off. Andy Moore was in the face. I think of Maurice Brown, the intended receiver. And he just wrestled it right away from him. That's the second interception of this game by Andy Moore. The center fielder, the man who roams, they turn him loose back there. They say, play the ball. Andy, I'm sure, is drifting as Terrence Jones drifts to the side of the field. He lays it up, and Andy Moore gets his second interception of the game. Look, he's reading ball all the way. He knows where the receiver is. He knows he's behind him. He goes up and just takes it away from him. If Moore hadn't caught that, they could have called defensive pass interference, or rather offensive pass interference. Anyway, the ball is spotted at the 13-yard line of Memphis State with 24 seconds to go in this first half. 
and Terrence Jones is down on the near sides. You get a good look through the masses, and if Jones is out, well, we got a Memphis State player hurt too. Greg Ross is down. Hey, that must have been one major collision. Greg was for pursuing Terrence from the backside. And Ross is at least up now. Boy, you hope on his all fours, but boy, they, they can't get Terrence Jones revived. He's laying on his stomach. Now they're going to move him over to his back, and they're not going to let him go anywhere. Oh, this could be a terrible blow for Tulane. They, Ross is getting up. They're going to help him off the field. I don't know if we can see this again or not, but they, it, as you said, must have been a ferocious collision. Yeah, you really want to hope that these kids aren't hurt. I mean, this is a sport nobody wants to get hurt. None of this is, is done intentionally. It's uh... We're going to get just a slight look now. Keep your eyes on Terrence Jones. Everybody is moving, of course, upfield with the football. Here comes Ross. And Ross comes from behind, and you only get to see it. Yeah, you, you he couldn't really right tell. He released the ball. But Terrence tell. Jones is up and walking it off. I'm glad to see that. The way the players were moving forward, you wouldn't have thought the collision was going to be that terrific, but apparently it was both players shaken up. Both had to be helped off. And now it's first and 10 Memphis State at their own 13-yard line. Let's see with 24 seconds to go if Charlie Bailey is cautious here. And he is. And Bill Moody carries the ball to the 16-yard line with 17. John Butler kicked the ball to the two-yard line. It went out of bounds on the far side, and so they'll back it up five to the 30 and kick it from there. Well, I tell you what, Dave, looking at the stat sheet from the first half, two things really stand out. One, other than the tie, 10-10, Memphis State holds onto the ball 15-41 to 14 minutes for uh, Tulane, and Tulane three turnovers to Memphis State's one. The turnover's the key in a ball game. That's absolutely correct. They've got more offensive yardage, but Memphis State with the bigger plays on defense from the seven-yard line. This is Michael Pierce. He's got some room on the outside, and he is brought down finally at the 37-yard line. Steve Smith, who's made one pretty good defensive play tonight on coverage, made the stop on the special teams. No hurry here for Michael Pierce. Watch the wall set up. He's going to go from one side of the field, cut it back here to his left, and just follow the wall. You can see the wall out in front there. Nice blocks. Pursuit's coming from the back side, but Pierce is just moving along. 35 walls off number David Garappa there, number 40. Pierce, great return. But a question on Terrence Jones is answered. He's back in. He's carrying the football, and he gets some yardage to the 44-yard line brought down by Mike Nettles. Looks tired like Jim Brown used to do. Gets up battered and slow and limps to the huddle and then comes out and streaks. That's a pickup of... Six yards, it'll be second down and four, ball on the 44-yard line officially. Jones looked across, got his flash signs from Greg Davis. See if they pass as much as they did the first half this time around. Going to run it to Michael Pierce. Pierce gets a yard, no more. Carlos Hollowell, the sophomore, makes the play. The more I see of this guy, the more I like him. From Raleigh Egypt High School, the leading tackler on the team coming in. He's got about three tackles this game. Carlos Hollowell has tremendous speed, Dave, for a man his size. He's 6'3", about 235 to 238, and, and runs down like 4'4", four, 5'4", four, 6'. Four, somewhere in that range. Great speed for a big man. So a big third down play early in the second half. From the 45, third down two, Jones going to pass the football. Over the middle he goes. He was looking for McIntosh too far. Good coverage by Mike Nettles. Boy, Nettles had him blanketed on that play. Mike Nettles, a veteran from Memphis State, a three-year starter back there in the secondary from down in Pensacola, Florida. The Pro Scouts really looking at this young man. Very tough, very dependable, durable. He's there game in, game out for you. Mika Noose, who's been a pretty good punter in this game, is back to punt. Averaging 40.7, 51-yarder, the longest. And he gets his foot into that one. Nettles will catch it at the 10, bobbles it, and dances to the 12, and right down there. A little pushing and shoving going on. Both teams very fired up as we start this second half. Stop 
made by Darren Scipio, who is a cornerback, but mainly a special teams player. There's Scott Rumley walking off. Rumley's played an awful lot today. He backs up Hollowell, and if you look at that linebacker position on the left side, you got two sophomores. Right there, 13-22 to go. Memphis State touches the football for the first time deep in their own territory from the 12. Jones will keep the football. And Jones gets about five or six to the 17-yard line. Tigers come out in the bone, Dave, to start the uh, second half, backed up deep in their territory. They come out. I was glad to see Wayne Pryor back in there at fullback. Uh, Jones reads it. Pulls the ball back in off the belly plate, keeps it himself, turns it up the field. Nice game. On the 18-yard line, a pickup of six, second down and four. Great craft split on the left side, Wilson on the right side, and straight ahead goes Pryor. And Pryor across the 21-yard line, just over it. It'll set up third down and about a half a yard to go. Lenzer Burton, the sophomore, strong safety, made the stop. And Charles Wilson, you see the, your back now he splits out on the right side. He's the hero so far offensively for Memphis State with that 95-yard kickoff return. Jones to John Norman, and Norman's got the first down. He was the third back in the wishbone. What a nice option. They go right over the middle. Lonnie Mark stops him, but not before he gets the first down all the way to the Memphis State 27-yard line. Make the dive into the line to Wayne Pryor. Gerald White pulls out and leads the way. They give it to the trailing back, John Norman. He just follows his block. He picks up the first down. Norman came in here with 46 yards. And 185 junior was the starting tailback to begin the year. Then Gerald White came in. Now Norman wants to see some playing time. Again from the bone, Jones will give it to Pryor. Pryor will get a yard or two no more to the 30-yard line. It was Vincent Momore, the linebacker in the middle, who makes the stop. Dave, I think Charlie Bailey and his offensive staff are trying to give Tulane a little bit of a different look. They saw no bone in the first half, and then we come out and open up in the wishbone here in the second half. I think they're trying to throw the Tulane defense off. Yeah, they passed so much in the first half, and now they've got to go. Interesting for sure. Jones, he's going to keep it. Nearly tripped up, and yes, he was. Big defensive play for Tulane by Andrew Treadway. We called his number 11. It looked like Jones might escape, but he could. Interesting, you see right above T. Jones there, that neck brace. He's been popped a couple times, and apparently it's doing the job. Remember that pinch nerve will shoot down his arm and numb things up, but he hasn't had a problem tonight. That's exactly right. That's the purpose of the neck roll. It doesn't look like it's affecting him a lot. Third and very long. Ball at the 28-yard line. Again uh, from the bone. And it's straight ahead. Pryor, who gets to the 33-yard line, but well short of the first down. So Jeff Fine will have to come on and put things away. Stop made that time by Richard Sauter. Mitchell Price was the man who was returning the punts, and I think they've got a new punt returner in. Can't quite catch his number at this point. Fight standing at his own 16-yard line. Gets the boot away. It's not long. It is end over end and carries for a long time. Comes down. It'll be taken at the 28-yard line and knocked back to the 26 goes Doug Adams and then he kicks outside and is marked out of bounds at the 32 yard line. The punt was 38 yards. That was excellent coverage Dave. Jeff White hung the ball up high. It was not a very long punt but he got great hang time. The pursuit was super. Saw about eight or nine white shirts around the ball and they really piled on Adams. Scott Rumley and Steve Smith finally forced him out of bounds. They spotted the 33, first and 10 there for Jones. Jones has Maurice Nelson on the left side. He puts Pierce in motion right, and goes straight up the middle to Rodney Hunter, and Hunter gets to the line of scrimmage, and there is nothing more. 
Dave, we have not seen the return of Greg Ross in the second half. Ross had the, the collision with Terrence Jones to end the first half of this game. I see him sitting over on the bench with some ice on his knee. I hope it's not very severe. We lost James Cribs last week. It'd be tough to lose two starting defensive tackles in two weeks' time. Adrian Herod has come in and played some now. Has been tough and was instrumental on that stop. Second down, a little more than 10. Big pressure. Allen Brown's going to get Terrence Jones from behind, and there's a flag in the backfield. Tell you what, that could very well be holding. There was great pressure coming there from Tony Manning, from Marlon Brown. This, is, this has got to be Marlon's best game of the season. It is a hole. Let's see if we can spot it. And correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, but that's the second sack, I believe, in this game for Marlon Brown. You got the hole. Yeah, there it there's is. the hole. 72 uh, has got uh, Tony Manning just locked up. Here comes Marlon Brown. You're talking about a guy who had 21 tackles for lost yardage last year, 11 quarterback sacks. He's adding to that total and won't be long until he breaks Tim Harris's record. It was Darren Shoulders who was guilty of the hold. Offense, 10-yard penalty, still second down. Memphis State will take the penalty. It'll be second down and 20. Watch Shoulders here. He sure has Tony Manning wrapped up. Oh, it's like a rodeo. That would have been good call. That would have been the second sack for Marlon Brown, I believe. And if it would have counted, it would have tied Marlon for the sack record. And no! Oh! Oh! He nearly pulled it off in the first half. This time he reads it and gets it. You read my mind. He knocked one down on Terrence Jones in the first half. He goes sky high. Keith Lee would be proud of this one. I'm telling you, Space Dog's living up to his name tonight. Oh, it's basketball time in the dome. They spotted at the nine-yard line. How high does Marlon Brown jump? He looked like Barishnikov when he came down and spun around. Down at the nine-yard line. Space Dog really putting on a show here. He's one sack away from tying Tim Harris for the all-time school sack record. And now he's got a big interception to go with a block pass. First down and goal from the nine. Jones will give the ball. It goes straight ahead. It may have been Bill Moody. I couldn't tell who carried the football. It was John Norman, Vincent Mulmore, and Mitchell Price on the stop. A pickup of about a yard, no more. Second down and goal. Spot that ball inside the eight. And Marvin Cox now in. There's number 30. Marvin Cox has one run this season. A two-yard touchdown. Strong with a long count. Going to keep it himself. Tries to cut outside. He does. He's to the five for the yard line and down there. Third down and goal from the four. Very good run by Tim Jones. He read it, decided to keep the ball when he got the defense strung in or strung out, looked for the cut up inside, took down to the five-yard line. Harvey Richard on the, Richard Harvey, I should say, on the stop and Thurston Harrison. Richard Harvey's name's been called a whole bunch of times. That fine linebacker from Tulane, we mentioned already. 14 solos last week in the National Lincoln Sports Illustrated. There it is. Third down and goal from the field. Three receivers split on the left side. Jones the pass. Looks, had Norman, but he couldn't hold on. Norman had the football at the three. Lenzer Burton was in his face. And John Butler will come in to try to give Memphis State their third lead of the night. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll take the three right here. I hope John Butler can kick it through the upright. Great defensive effort by Tulane. Memphis State takes over deep in their territory. They bow up and hold it. Andy Whitwell will hold. The ball spotted down at the 11 to 21 yard attempt. John's already hit a 37 yarder in this game. Snaps down. Kicks on the way. And it is no good. He missed it on the left side. It's still 10 all. Back in a moment. First down and 10 from the 20. Jones on a keeper. Marlon Brown from behind got him. He got about a yard or two, but no more. Scott Rumley came over and helped out, too. Oh, boy. Memphis State had a golden opportunity to take a lead, 13-10. John Butler hit a 37-yarder in the first quarter, missed a 21-yarder. It's really his first miss of the year, Bob. He had two others blocked, but he'd been pretty perfect. Well, that's tonight. exactly right. The blocks do count against the kicker this year as far as statistics are concerned, but the two blocks are the only uh, Mars on his kicking record this season. 
Seven minutes, 18 seconds to go in this third quarter. And there's a quick pass, and again, Marlon Brown had his hands high in the air, and Jones tried to deliver it. it looked like to the side of the hands. Damon Young was around the action, too. It'll be third down and nine yards to go. I want to tell you, Marlon Brown is playing an inspired ball game tonight. He must have three or four block passes. He's got a couple of tackles for a loss. He's got one sack. He's got a pass interception. He's all over the field tonight. The 1989 Oldsmobiles are in. See the new generation of Olds at the Rivermen of Olds. Pryor, Regal, Mary, and Hudson Rook. The 89s are here. Third down, nine yards to go. Jones going to pass. And he's got his man. And down goes Maurice Nelson. Nelson been a th thorn in the side of Memphis State tonight. He gets the first down at the 32-yard line. He's the one that caught the touchdown pass in the second quarter. Well, Tulane's SID just handed me a note that here's some injury reports from the first half. Maurice Nelson has a sprained ankle, but he sure looked didn't like he didn't have one right there. Terrence Jones, a bruised lower back, and Mitchell Price, bruised rib. So it is a hard hitting game out there tonight. They're gutsy. They're playing hurt. First down and 10. Jones will keep it, cut it upfield, get about five. Depends on where they spot the football. He rolled forward for a couple more than maybe he should get. The official's right on the play, spotted at the 38-yard line. Terrence Jones really getting up slowly. He's, he's gone the distance tonight. He's taking some big blows. Rodney Lewis there just played him, the ball, and the uh, trailing back. Decided that Jones wasn't going to pitch and then rode him down. Second down. And four, a pickup of six by Jones there. He's he's just so talented that you, you don't know which way to play him. And he can play an option. He can play a, the drop back passer. He's so versatile. Nelson in motion on the right side. And Jones tried to keep it. And Nico Perkins said no way. How many times have we called Nico's name tonight? Boy, I tell you what. He is just putting on a heck of an effort tonight. Great, great athlete. We've talked about him being a track athlete, a decathlete. He just uses athletic ability here, beats the tackle and comes in. Jones is going naked and going to come back and throw to this side, and Nico pulls him down. That's a loss of four, third down and eight, a passing situation for Terrence Jones. He has two wide receivers on the left side and one on the right. One man in the backfield. Jones goes back. Whistles blow, a flag on the turf. I think what we've got, Darren's shoulders, the tackle stood up. He lifted his hand up. Marlon Brown would agree with it. He's clapping his hands. Dead ball foul. False start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. You know, that's what happens when, you, when you're a sports information director. You might miss that call, but as an assistant athletic director, you, you would. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, the guy, I thought he's lifted his hand to wave to me. It was, uh, it was pretty obvious. So that sets it up third down and 13, and Terrence Jones really has to pass now. He's backed all the way to the 28. He's got Maurice Nelson on the right side, McIntosh on the left. Big trouble again. Tries to scramble out of it. It's his own man, still on his feet. The guy's a pinball. Let's it go, and it's caught. Oh, what a play. And we're going to probably have a late hit here. Terrence Jones is down. I'm not sure of the play. There was great pursuit there, but a flag has been dropped. Maurice Nelson made the catch. He's been everywhere tonight, bad ankle and all. How many shots did Memphis State have? Heron had one shot, had another. I tell you what, that sure looked like a clip right there on Adrian Heron. It wasn't called. Marlon Brown gets picked off. Here comes Tony Manning. I tell you what. That's a little close. I mean, it's it's hard when you're a big man moving like that and try to uh, try to hold up. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense, 15 yards from the succeeding spot, first down. So they tack it out from the 50. It's down to the 35, and Charlie Bailey's living. I agree with him wholeheartedly. I don't. I just can't see that play. Terrence went down, but I thought Tony Manning was right on him before the blow. You know, as the ball was delivered. Memphis State can't get down here. That's the fifth penalty now. 61 yards to Lane. Whistle for one more, but you see the yardage differential. First and 10 from the Memphis State 35. Back in the eye of the green wave. And is run out at the 30. That's a pickup of five. And the fans sort of looking for another late hit call. Mike Nettles and Damon Young came over in a hurry. Michael Pierce has not carried the ball a whole lot today, but he looked impressive on that one as he 
picks up a quick five. I'll tell you what, Dave, the Memphis State defense really continues to look pretty fresh. We look crisp, we're running around a lot. Tulane really seems to be dragging, but they're moving the ball, slowly to shoot way down the field. Well, you see why Terrence Jones is so dangerous. Memphis State had him dead way back at his own 15-yard line. He winds up with a big play to the 50, and then he gets hit late. It's all the way down to the 35. Second down, Pierce again tries to bounce out side on the right side. A foot, a shoe came up, flying off the turf. Pierce is knocked down by Marlon Brown, who else? A pickup of two, that's all, third down and three. Marlon Brown is playing inspired football tonight, huh? I tell you what, he's demonstrating a lot of leadership out there to some of the young guys that are playing here tonight. You see Adrian here, he's really sucking the air. He looks like he's a bit tired. He doesn't play this much normally. And because of injuries, he's playing a lot. We've got a timeout. It's taken by Tulane on a very crucial third down and three. We'll come back for that play in just a second. 10 our score, four minutes, 16 seconds left in the third quarter. Memphis State, by all means, should be ahead 13-10, but they're not. And Terrence Jones and Tulane has third down, three yards to go at the Tiger 28-yard line. This defense has been tremendous tonight. They really have not broken it all. They've done a couple of times. Jones on the option, pitches it up. Michael Pierce. Davis! Another big play by the defense. And I, I believe we may have a flag that was thrown. Yeah, it's right at the 30-yard line, and they're going to call it face mask on Memphis State. Oh, brother. Boy, Damon just reaches out. Let's see the end of this play here. I thought he had the man by the shoulder pads in the back. Damon pursues it out. No, he gets his hand up there high. He gets it up there in the face mask. Oh, tough break for Memphis State. The referee was right there in the camera work. The fine job of the crew here at Creative Five Sports Marketing face mask. shows it. Defense, first down. They call it an inadvertent face mask. I don't think Damon had any intention. I don't believe any player really has an intentional face mask. You don't want the big 15-yard penalty. So the ball spotted now, automatic first down at the 24. Tough break, Memphis State not getting any breaks now in this third quarter. Jones to pass, again with time, and we may get interference. No, sir, he was going for McIntosh, and Mike Nettles tripped, and McIntosh couldn't get to the football, but no call. Maybe that's an evening up job right there. I don't know, Dave. I, Mike Nettles looked like he was running ahead of McIntosh. I don't know if uh, their feet got tangled up and Mike just went down and the McIntosh tripped over him, but the official is very vehement down there. There is a no call. There was no interference involved. Yeah, the crowd started to boo, but the official right there was very clear. Said no way. Second down, 10 yards to go. From the 24. Jones has one man in motion. That's Nelson on the right side in the eye. Jones going to keep. Pitches at the last second. Pierce has got a little bit of room, but not a whole lot. Eddie Moore comes over and drags him down. And another flag. No, no. I, this, it can't be. Eddie Moore had him by the back of the shoulder pads. I don't see any way there could be a face mask call here. Eddie Moore very upset. He and Maurice Nelson gather by the officials to see who's going to win the argument. We don't know what the call is on, but Tulane knows it's against Memphis State. The fans are starting to cheer, and they say face mask again. That's incredible. That is incredible. He's got, he's, well, I tell you what, he did get his hand up there. It was very, very face incidental. Mask, defense, five he, yards, yeah, he had still it. second he down. Sure From one angle, it looked incidental. The second angle clearly shows Eddie Moore got it. Moore doesn't believe it. He's still trying to fire up the defense. Second down now and about a yard as they spot it just inside. I should say just outside the 15 yard line. Three minutes, 30 seconds to go, third quarter. Jones gives it to Pierce. Pierce with a little room, has the first down across the 10 to the 9. It'll be first and goal there. Nico Perkins makes the stop. You hate to see Memphis State lose their composure. This, this whole drive has been aided by, by flags. The, uh, the rubbing the passer, the two face mask calls. Defense has got to regain their composure and just bow up here and deny them the end zone. 
In case you're just joining us on Channel 30, I'm Dave Woloshin, along with Bob Wynn, Memphis State Assistant Athletic Director. It is 10 all. Three minutes, 11 seconds to go in the dome. Tulane driving. They've got it first and goal just inside the Tiger 10. Jones will give it for the first back. I believe that was Michael Pierce. Carlos Hallowell meets him at about the seven yard line. It'll be second and goal from there. Well, I tell you, the Memphis State defense is really pursuing seven, eight, nine white shirts around the ball. The coaches preach that each week, run to the ball on every play, and the defense is living up to that tonight. Maurice Nelson leaves the ball game. He's the receiver who has hurt Memphis State tonight. Four catches, 52 yards, and a touchdown. They bring in a tight end. They've got two wide receivers still. They go from the pro set. Jones, option left side, pitches it. Pitches to the five and no more. Nettles and DeBose team up and shut the door at the four. Once again, that, that Memphis State speed on defense is showing here. Great lateral pursuit. They just string the play out to the boundary, drive Michael Pierce out. You know, the Union Planners Memphis State Visa card is pet food for the Tigers. The way that you show your support of MSU and you help feed the Alumni Association and the scholarship programs. Apply for your card today at any Union Planners branch or call. 5-2-3-6-7-3-7. And give the Tigers something to growl about. Tulane on the big third down wants to call time. A minute 45 to go in this third quarter. We're tied at 10 off. Third down and goal from the four. We'll be back for the big play in a moment. Let's go down the situation. A minute 45 to go. Third quarter. The ball is on the Tigers' four-yard line. It is third down and goal for Tulane from there. Well, Nelson has come back in. There are three wide receivers. One back in over the middle. It's picked up! Reggie DeBose after it was tipped by Damon Young, I believe. Memphis State defense. Oh, brother, it doesn't get any bigger than that. Well, I tell you what, the Tiger defense has really risen to the occasion tonight. Just like their fans. Wow, watch Reggie Dubose here, his second interception of the season. He had the very first one against Ole Miss in the opening game of the season. Comes back, grabs a tip pass. Hang on, Reg. Here he goes. He listened to you. I tell you what, what a play. What a play. Damon Young tipped it up. You'll see it from this angle, I'm sure, very well. Jones had good time. He saw the man cutting across. Great play by Young. He just got right in front of Michael Pierce. And the is the man on the spot. Blitz by Tulane. Memphis State was able to get the ball slanting to Wayne Pryor. Lonnie March came in and made the stop, but not a bad pickup for Pryor under pressure. He got three and a half yards. It'll be second down. That's Seven and a half yards to go. Down deep here, I'm sure they want to keep this ball in Wayne Pryor's hands. Look at that story, huh? Five turnovers now by Tulane. The Tigers just won. And that was when they gambled long and had Wilson, but the ball was under throw. Jones will pitch it. Here's Joe White. He's going to win. Across the 15, I think he's got the first down. Mitchell Price put him down. Boy, Daryl Nicholson laid a heck of a block out there. If Gerald could have picked that back foot up one more time, he was gone because Daryl just cleaned out the corner. He likes playing Tulane. That big game last year, of course, he got injured in it, but this is sort of payback for him. Well, Memphis State with a big interception in the end zone. He's run out to the floor. Even stays up for that missed 21-yard field goal by Butler in the third quarter. 42 seconds left in that period. And the game is straight ahead to Pryor, who gets across the 20 to the 21. Great, great second effort. Can't say enough about Wayne Pryor. He stacked up at the line. He backs up a step and hits it again and picks up about three or four yards. Linebacker on the right side, Leroy Brown, made the stop. Bad, bad Leroy Brown, but great determination. Well, watch Wayne Pryor. Nothing going there. Let me take this hole right here. Oh, here's about five. I don't know how he got there. I really don't. They call it officially four yards, second down and six. Great fight by Wayne Pryor. What a, what a steady back he is. Jones on the keeper. Nothing there. That was Leroy Brown again. They say fumble. And Tulane says they got the football. I think the play is going to be dead. Richard Sutter 
and picked it up, and it won't count. The play was dead, and that'll end the third quarter. What a thriller. It is all tied, 10-10. We've got 15 minutes of football left, so don't go anywhere. Enjoy it on Channel 30. Third down, seven yards to go. Left to stay with the football at their own 20-yard line. Jones will pass the ball, and he's got a man. It's Wilson. Wilson at the 32-yard line is backed up to the 30. They'll spot it at the 32, and a first down. And it, during the break, Bob, you said Big Mo has swung, and I think you're right on the money here. Boy, isn't it a game of momentum? I tell you what, Tulane comes driving down the field. It looks like they're going to score. And then all of a sudden, their bubble, bu uh, bubble, bubble burst, I'll get it out in a minute, with the interception. And now the Tigers seem to have all the momentum and come charging back. Thurston Harrison on the stop. Not before the first down at the 32. Three receivers in, two split left side from the eye. Jones goes back. There's nearly a hold, and I don't think they called it. And a reception by Martin at the 45. Great, great protection there by the offensive line. They, uh, they held Tulane out, gave Tim time to look around. Watch this reception. Chris goes down. Gets his hands under the ball. Oh, oh yeah. good catch. Great camera work by the people here in the dub and the creative sports marketing people. You clearly see a tremendous catch by Martin. I think that's his third catch. And from the 45, they give Gerald White. He breaks one tackle. He cuts it back across the 50 to the 45 of Tulane. What a run by Gerald White. Vincent Mulmore on the stop. He made two quick cuts. There's no question that knee's not bothering him anymore. I'll guarantee it's not. Gerald White is a fired-up football player right now. All faults of the injury. Misdirection. The handoff comes back across the grain. Watch Gerald here. Plant. Oh, there you go. Right up inside. Now back outside again. What a run by Gerald White. If you can make those two cuts on this turf, your knee is steady. I promise. First down and 10 is spotted at the 44 of Tulane. Jones gives it straight ahead prior. He's met right at the 45. He may have gotten to the line of scrimmage. He might have lost a yard. Good uh, pursuit that time and by the Tulane defense, led by Jay Rick, the nose guy. If you can stop head up like that, Wayne Pryor, you're doing something right, huh? Yeah, they called Wayne. The guy slid off the block at the line of scrimmage, just met him head on. But Wayne didn't want to go down. They just kind of eased him down the line of scrimmage, so the whistle blew. we got to think about a Budweiser player of the game. We were leaning for Charles Wilson. Now you got Marlon Brown to think about a bunch of other people. Eddie Moore's got a couple of interceptions. Pressure on Jones as he airs it out. He's looking for Wilson on the right side. And he's got Kraft. He's got what? Kraft at the four-yard line. Holy cow! Catch by Ray Kraft. Ray just stops, starts backpedaling. The defender goes on into the end zone. Ray falls down as he's catching the ball. You'll see split further to the right side is Wilson. That's where I thought the ball was going to go. But there's Kraft, and you see him beat Mitchell Price on the inside. He just waits. Price is lost, and Kraft has it at the four. Oh, what a boy, Ray Ray. What a catch. Ray Kraft out of Bolton High School out in Shelby County. He just streaks down the seam. Tim Jones airs it out. I thought the ball might have been thrown a little too high. Ray hangs his heels. Oh, what a play. Here comes Gerald White to the three. No more. Fumble. It's loose in the end zone. Memphis State got it, but it won't count. I believe they're going to whistle that thing dead. Jump it up and try to catch it. Get that thing in a hurry. It was Daryl Nicholson, and he wound up getting it in the end zone. But the ball is spotted at the two-yard line. Don't you think Darrell Nicholson would have been a happy guy to get a touchdown down here? Mark Thornhill on the stop. What a ball game we've got on Channel 30, WFKW TV, second down goal. We see it at the two. Jones is going to pass wide open. Touchdown. touchdown. I believe it's Marvin Cox. His first reception on his first run as a Tiger. He scores a touchdown on his first catch. He gets a touchdown. Well, that's some trivia for you. His first run is a touchdown of two yards. His first catch as a Tiger is a touchdown reception of two yards. And the Tigers lead 16-10, 12-09 to go in this ballgame. Oh, yes, sir. -y. I'm going to tell you what, Dave, you couldn't wish for a young man to get a touchdown. Marvin Cox lost his father in the first week of camp in August. Snap down, kick the buckle up. It's good. 17-10. Memphis State leads, 12.09 to go in this ballgame. Don't go away. Come back for the exciting finish. Yarder to Ray Kraft. That sets this one up. 
Tim just fakes the dive. Gets Marvin Cox out there isolated. There he is again. You know, he had the touchdown uh, back in Memphis on his, on his first run ever as a Tiger, and now his first pass reception is another score. 17-10, the Tigers lead. The kick is short. It is taken there by Terrence Strickland. Strickland fights his way to the 23-yard line, and that'll be it. Charlie Bailey in the white cap. Very happy. Here's the uh, another angle play action pass. Jones goes back wide open. Well, I what, play action just held the linebackers in. That's who has the coverage on Marvin Cox on that play. He was wide open. David Graffa, by the way, on that uh, special team made the stop. There's the drive, 11 plays, 96 yards. About four and a half minutes. First down and 10, Terrence Jones going to air it up. Has to. He, he had Hunter right at the 30 and hit him right in the shoulder pad on the chest and bounced away like a bullet. I tell you what, Terrence Jones didn't show much touch on the ball right there. He's got his man sitting wide open over the line of scrimmage, and he threw it like he was airing it out 60 yards. You know, he knows he made a mistake. You see him clapping at himself, trying to reassure himself, hey, we're, we're only down a touchdown. There's 11 minutes and 59 seconds to go in this game. Just be cool. Brown, you see lined up there on the left side. He's been putting the heat on Terrence Jones all night. And Jones again forced out of the pocket. Throws in a hurry. He's got McIntosh at the 43-yard line. Randall Cooper makes the stop for Memphis State. Well, I tell you what, the Tulane line did a tremendous, tremendous job of, uh, of keeping the pressure off of Terrence Jones. Watch this. They get everybody down here. They got his Larry Cox in there. First time he's played all season. They ride him to the ground. Terrence just rolls outside. And he sits there all day. I just counted 11 seconds before he threw the football. Tough to cover a receiver in this league in 11 for 11 seconds. You're not kidding. Jones goes back to pass. A little bit more pressure this time. He's got McIntosh again. McIntosh tries the magic with one hand, but it couldn't. Randall Cooper, that time pretty good defense, forced that throw to McIntosh's outside shoulder out of bounds. It'll be second down, 10 yards to go. The ball spotted at the Greenway 43-yard line. Tell you what, Terrence Jones's receivers have really helped him out tonight. They have made some wonderful, wonderful one-hand catches, some outstanding grabs right as they're going out of bounds. Second down, very long as you see. Jones to the air. And he's got Hunter for short yardage across the 45 to the 47-yard line. It'll be third down and about seven yards to go. Scott Rumwin, the sophomore from Dallas, makes the stop. And there's Tulane. They're trying to figure out what they could do. You know, they passed for under 50% on the year in terms of plays in the air and plays on the ground, but they throw that ball a lot tonight. And yet, though they picked up the yardage, the Memphis State defense has come up with the big plays. They're going to try to come up with one here. Uh -uh. That'll be a first down. Reggie DuBose and Mike Nettles make the stop, but the first down was picked up. I think it was Ferdinand just trailing yeah. right across. He comes across and takes a route, squares it off, and comes back across the field underneath the linebackers, makes the catch, and picks up the first down. I'm wondering what Jones's accuracy is so far tonight. We'll get that in a second for you. He's dumped off a lot of short passes. That one was good enough for the first down. Hunter in motion on the left side. Pressure. Jones gets away somehow, but now Marlon gets to him and sacks him, and that'll tie the school record for sacks. No question about it now. I believe that gives him 18 career quarterback sacks, and he's done that in about two and a quarter seasons. Marlon Brown just uses a great, great speed that he has. You're talking about a man 6'4", 225. Watch this. He's coming all the way across from the backside. Great coverage downfield that allows... Uh, Allows Brown to get in there. Jones Tony, had no one to throw to. Tony him. Manning almost got him earlier, and I think you've got to give Brown, uh, rather Manning, some credit to that Brown sack. Anyway, the next one that Brown makes is history. Jones back to pass, second down and long, 17. Again with a lot of time, and he's gone long over the middle, and Nelson is open. Touchdown. Terrence Jones.
He's got man coverage back there. I don't know if Randall Cooper was looking for help from underneath, but he got deep, deep over his shoulder. I think Randall Cooper tripped at about the eight yard line. Let's watch it again. Look at all the time. He's got all the time in the world. Uh, Randall didn't trip, he just got beat. Maurice Nelson, his second touchdown this game. That one 53 yards. So he's got touchdown passes of 51 and 53 yards. Maurice Nelson looking more like not zero every day. Snap down, kick is up. It's good, and we're tied again. Memphis State has led three times. They've been tied three times. There you see the scoreboard, but the Tigers get the ball back in a few seconds. It's been a wild night in the Dome in New Orleans. Glad you could join us. I'm Dave Velocian along with Bob Wynn on WNKW TV 30. You know, it's been a kind of crazy night. Maybe Charles Wilson can weave some more magic. He's kicked, had a kick return of 95 yards for a touchdown. He'll try it again as Todd Wiggins kicks things off. Wilson will take it at the eight. Now, that hole is closed up in a hurry. There's a flag on the play. It was thrown at the 18. Wilson returned it to the 23. And they got a call against Memphis State. And I don't know if I saw that, but it looked like a defensive face mask. He, he, no, I think he called defensive holding. He threw the flag in the direction of Lee Butler. Watch behind the play here. They'll sort things out. They're going to definitely walk it off against Memphis State. That must have been a hold. So the hold walks it back to the nine. Charlie Bailey trying to get his team back up. He hasn't had a whole bunch of breaks except for big plays that his team earned. Nine minutes, 21 seconds to go in this football game. Ray Kraft is quite a big one. And Charles Wilson split to the right side. Martin split to the left in the I formation. And John Norman is shot as soon as he touches the football. Boy, Richard Harvey. Harvey really made a big play there. And we go back to the touchdown, this long 50-plus yarder. Look at Jones again with good time. Boy, he just puts it on the money, doesn't he? Here's Cooper getting beat, and Maurice Nelson with his second touchdown of the night. Eight plays, 74 yards, not a whole lot of time, 247. 53 yards. Big play. 12. Incomplete. Wilson looked like he might have been open, but there was pressure on Jones. And Tim looks like he might have got shaken up a bit on that one. I think Tim's having trouble stopping and planting the throw. It looks like once again he hung his foot on that rug and just rolled his ankle over. There's the stats on Tim, over 50%. Two touchdown passes, 112 yards. Just the one interception, and that was on a bomb attempt. The two touchdown passes, the first two of the season for any Tiger quarterback. Third down at 12, and this super dumb crowd really on their feet. Now pressure for Jones, and he gets rid of it. And it's so thrown, incomplete, looking for Wilson. He just threw that one away very wisely. Very it could have been... Uh, Eaten for two points. Big, big heads up play by Tim Jones. You hate to see your quarterback drop back into the end zone. He was in the grass. Fortunately, there's not an in the grass in college, and he uh, unloaded the ball. We talked about how Big Mo had swung earlier from Memphis State. Now Tulane's starting to get momentum. Jones wisely threw that thing away. You saw it looked like he was in trouble for a little bit. Jeff Fight in his own end zone near the end. Good snap. Uh, he gets it away. Comes down at the 42-yard line and is down there by Memphis State. So Boy, Tulane has great field position with eight minutes and 28 seconds to go in this game. We can sure use the big roll on that punt. Jeff Fight with his heels against the back of the end zone gets the ball out to about the Memphis State 41-yard line. Let me say something too. Remember in the game against Ole Miss, 
when he had pressure, he didn't rush his kick to get it off, and he got that thing blocked. Today, just now, there that pressure was there, and he hurried the kick, and he got it away, and it turns out to be all right. Although Tulane's got the good field position from the 42. Jones pitches Michael Pierce. Good defense, Reggie Dubose. He fought off the block and stopped Pierce to just a one-yard gain. Marlon Brown comes in and mops up on the play. That Memphis State defense pursuing sideline to sideline. That's what you got to do. We've got the camera centered on Marlon Brown there, but really Reggie Dubose made that play. Down in the, we'll call it nine yards. One man split left, one right, one man in the slot. That's Pierce. Jones is going to pass. And it's picked up by Lauren Schmidt. 45, and he goes out of bounds at the 38-yard line of Tulane. Eddie Moore's third interception in this football game. Eddie Moore has just tied Seattle Seahawks and Memphis State cornerback Keith Simpson for second place for most interceptions in a game. The record is four. Simpson had three against North Texas State. Eddie Moore, three tonight. You don't think Charlie Bailey's happy, do you? I tell you what, Charlie Bailey is elated. The we fans are loving it, too. There's the Memphis State people who came. About 3,000 of them made that long, long road. Hey, we love the WFKW. Well, that's old Kevin Roper. He works in the athletic department. I'm sorry, Kevin Cochran works down in the athletic department. And, uh, boy, he's a real Tiger fan. Eight minutes, 13 seconds to go. Tigers have the football at the two-lane 38. Jones going to go to the air. Jones over the middle. He's got Comes down, runs a slant pattern, just drifts into the gap in the zone coverage. Tim Jones right on the money. He doesn't look rusty, does he? No, sir. And if there was any doubt about him throwing the football, he's thrown it tonight well over 100 yards. Martin down at the 20. Crozier makes the stop for the green wave. First down and 10. 54. the clock a big fat. Jones to Pryor. Pryor tries the right side, gets across the 20 to the 19. Not much there. Got to credit to Wayne's defense against the run tonight. They've been pretty tough. Pat Stutt made the stop there. Feed the Tigers with a Memphis State University Visa card. You get it from Union Planners. With it, you show your support. And part of the proceeds go to the Alumni Association and the Scholarship Fund. Apply for your Tiger card at any Union Planners branch or call. 7 Second down, nine yards to go. Straight ahead, Pryor over the 10-yard line. And a first down, Tigers. Stop made by Pat Stant. Wayne Pryor just comes right up behind the guard and off the center. Follows him straight up the field. Once he broke the initial line of scrimmage there and got through Tulane's front wall, it was easy sailing for the 10-yard game. Stant. And a starter is playing now. This ball game has been ferocious in terms of tempo, so lots of subs seems to tell. He's made two stops in a row. It is first down and 10 from about the 10 and a half. Straight ahead. Pryor trying to keep it going. You see the legs turning, but he stopped at about the nine. Good defense by Tulane, but this kid, Pryor, just does not want to go down. Well, I tell you what, that's what you teach your backs, Dave. Keep your legs going. If you don't drive your legs, you're not going anywhere. Wayne Pryor doesn't stop his legs turning until he's on the turf. Thurston Harrison made the stop for the Green Wave. Six minutes, 23 seconds to go. Who will our Budweiser player of the game be? Got to, I guess it's got to be any more now with those three interceptions tying that record. How about the whole defensive unit? How about the whole offensive unit? Wayne Pryor has a little bit of daylight down to the five. Richard Harvey made the stop for the Green Wave. I tell you, these are the kind of problems you love, picking players of the game, but let's face it, this game's not over. Plenty of time, just under six minutes, 17 all. Third down, five yards to go, from about the five and a half. This is where Memphis State has to get the ball in. They get down and on the five-yard line, and we've got it twice this ball game. You can't get any points out. They've got to get it in here. Jones, play action. Throws over the middle. Oh, boy. Look at 
for a call, staring the referee. Lee Butler. Back dead in the end. Eyes was Lee Butler. He thought he might have been held. Defense that time by Mitchell Price and by Rick Crozier. Let's watch this. Sure looks like they closed in on Lee Butler in a hurry. There's Lee drifting over the middle. Kim seizing. Oh. oh, boy, that looks like a face guard on Crozier. Exactly. I tell you, that was, a, that was an awful tough call. John Butler missed the 21 yarder. This one will come from the 12, so it's a 22 yarder. He made the 37, one for two tonight. Whitwell's hold is down. The kick is on the way, and it looks good. Oh, no. This is incredible. I tell you what, John Butler's usually Mr. Automatic. We had talked last night about Tulane's kicking game not being so good and how good Memphis State's was. John, unfortunately, has missed two field goal, two chip shots tonight. Now the momentum swings again. Butler was two out of four coming in, but the two that he'd missed had been blocked. Now he's two out of six, and he's missed a 21-yarder and a 22-yarder. That'll make Charlie Bailey sweat. 5.25 to go, and Tulane gets the ball at their own 20. Heartbreaking for Memphis State for certain. Maybe the defense could come up with another big play. Jones, little draw play, and there's a big hole up the middle to the 35-yard line. Scampers, Melvin Adams, the fullback. This is the first time we've seen Melvin Adams tonight. He ought to be pretty fresh because they played Rodney Hunter quite a bit. The two safeties, the free one and the strong one, Moore and DuBose respectively had to make the stop. That's a gain of 15 yards. First down at the 35. You don't want to give Tulane a chance to kick a field goal to win this game now. 17-17. Oh, John Butler's got to be feeling some heat. Feel sorry for the kid for sure. Just under five minutes. Jones keeps the left side. Good defense that time. Damon Young and Carlos Hollowell were there, and it forced Jones to just slide after a pickup of about a half yard. Second down, they'll call it nine. Terrence Jones got to be a little gun shy. Everywhere he's gone tonight, there's been five, six, seven, eight white jerseys around him. He's, the play gets strung out, he decides to go down. I always wish there was overtime now, don't you? 17-0. 420 to go, second down and nine from the 36-yard line. Jones, big pressure the second. Clarence Haver, I believe, gets the sack. Against Arkansas State, Clarence Haver had a career that night with four tackles and one sack. Here he comes to the backside, boom. I tell you what, though, Torrey Epps helped make that play. You're right. You're he, absolutely correct. He comes in and grabs Jones' arm and holds his passing arm down so Clarence Haver makes the stop. You know, Jones was lucky he didn't fumble that football. That's a break. That's the third sack by Memphis State. Jimmy Jones hasn't been sacked yet. 3.37 to go. Pressure again. Jones unloses, leashes it over the middle. Incomplete. He was looking for Jerry Urson, first time he's played tonight, and Steve Smith. I tell you what, this time, Dave, we had deep coverage. Cooper had him deep, help underneath from Steve Smith. Great coverage on the play. Memphis State's going to get the football back with 3.32 to go. And a chance to maybe drive and either score a touchdown or give John Butler a chance to rectify himself. From the 19. Lankanoos gets it away. The Tigers had a block on. And Nettles will call a fair catch at the 33-yard line. Memphis State will take over. First and 10 from there with 3 minutes and 25 seconds to go in a thriller in the dome. I'm telling you, Dave, this is like a heavyweight fight, isn't it? Two heavyweights out there, toe-to-toe, -to -toe, slugging it out. They move from one side. One guy goes down and then the other. I'm telling you, it's a great, great ball game. Charlie Benton looks a little nervous, doesn't he? Well, I tell you what, you always get tense in a game like this. So does Greg Davis. Good shot of both sidelines. Memphis State now with destiny in their own hands. A quick, I believe, audible on a real first check by Jones. And he's going to give the football to Gerald White, who goes up the middle. And he gets to the 40, and there's a flag on the play. It looks like it may be going against Memphis State. Lonnie March really slammed the door on Gerald White, and the call will go against the Tigers. Well, let's see if we see it here, Dave. I, you just 
So I cannot get. Gerald cuts it back up the middle. I don't think it's called on Reed Bennett there. I, I didn't see it, but I'm sure the official saw something. Couldn't see anything from that replay, but they're going to walk it off 10 yards. Got and holding, oh. offense, 10-yard penalty, still first down. Charlie Bailey is absolutely living on the sidelines. He has worn that official out. So are some of the other coaches in that two, please. That's Rick Trickett, the offensive line coach, assistant head coach, and I'm sure he's given him a piece of his mind as well. Seems kind of funny when you have big plays on first down and the flags fly once the play is over. First down and 20 yards to go. Jones to the air, over the middle, and it is incomplete. It looks like Martin May be a hero again with a great catch, and you see the flag come from behind the play. We'll hold our brushes. It's against Tulane. Maybe it's an interference call. It is a hold on the defense. And I believe an automatic first down. I think you're right, Dave. I believe that is an automatic first down. It must have been on Charles Wilson. I, I couldn't see a hold on Chris Martin, and that looked like who the intended receiver was. Illegal use of the hands. Defense. Automatic first down. It's got to be just off the screen on yeah. Charles Wilson. He came back in talking to the official. And that's when the flag had gone down. It would have been on the right side of your screen, but it was well out of the picture. First down and 10, Memphis State. Spot the ball, the 28-yard line. Jones gives it to White. White bounces away from one, gets to the line of scrimmage, and no It worked last time before the penalty. It didn't work that time. Tell you what, though, Tulane was coming with another blitz from the outside, Dave. It was a very good play by Gerald. We read the blitz coming on the quick handoff. He steps back up in there, picks up one yard, but at least it wasn't a big loser. Richard Sauter and Richard Harvey, that left side of the defense that's been so good for Tulane. Not even on that stop. 2.32 to go and ticket. Second down, the point nine. A one-yard pickup for White on that play. He's lucky to get one. Jones is going to pass. Some pressure. He lost it for Wilson. And it is knocked away at the last second. Great. Mitchell Price knocked it away. It was either Price knocking it away or Mark Thornhill, the freshman. But for a second, I thought Wilson might come up with the play. Boy, great recovery here by the Tulane secondary. The ball's thrown up pretty high. Thornhill, once again, young man from Escambia, Florida, from Pensacola, Escambia High School. Great recovery. Just a freshman, folks. He'll be around for a while. Superb. True freshman, by the way. Jones on third and nine. Looks nobody open. He fumbled the football. It's loose. It's recovered by Tulane. Oh, what a bad break for the Tigers. Perry Leslie recovered it for the Green Wave at the Memphis State 14-yard line. Jones oh. has been flawless up till now. What a bad, bad time for a turnover. No time is a good time, but so deep in your own territory with only two minutes to go in the ball game and the game tied. Jones wanted to throw the football here. You see him, but nobody was open. He thought, all right, I'll just eat it, but he got hit so hard he couldn't hold on. And there is the recovery by Tulane. First down and 10 from the 14 in Tigers territory. Jones gives it to Michael Pierce. He's to the 14-yard line with two minutes and six seconds to go in the game. And they'll be happy to just run the football and then try to kick the field goal for the win. You know, they came back last week against Kansas State. They were down, and with 14 seconds to go, Jones led them down the field and scored, and they were winners. Now they get a big break, and he's got an opportunity to do it again. Carlos Hollowell and Eddie Moore on the stop there. It'll be second down and nine yards to go. One yard for Pierce. Jones pitches it out. It's Pierce at the 20. He gets to the 14, and no more. We've got a flag away from the play on the left side of the field. That's the far side. And we've got some injuries down there, too, possibly. Memphis State players getting up slowly. Clarence Heber now gets up. And it's a clip against Tulane. The Tigers will take it, maybe backing Tulane out of field goal position. You know, their field goal kicker, Todd Wiggins, has not been very good this year. He's 5 out of 10. Stop made by uh, Haver and by Adrian Herod. Watch, watch number 79 out here, Dave. Tony Manning's got his back turned right in the back. Good camera work. Flipping. Offense. 
still second down. Going to back the football all the way down to the 29-yard line. It'll still be second down, as you heard. And Jones, Terrence is supposed to be the Heisman candidate. Tim Jones, just as impressive, huh? Five interceptions. That's got to hurt. 48 percent for Tim Jones. Jones, Terrence puts it in the air. Over throws Maurice Nelson, who's caught both touchdown passes. Incomplete at the 15. It'll be third down and 24 yards to go. Randall Cooper playing some D there. Watch for Terrence Jones to come underneath right here, Dave. I'm sure he's going to look for something short underneath just to try to set the field goal up again. Maybe get back 10 yards or so and give his kicker a better shot. Well, Todd Wiggins, three out of six from inside the 39. Five, uh, I guess he would be now three out of seven. So he's two out of four. Jones back, big pressure, he just gets it away, it's overthrown, he was looking for McIntosh, Nettles with good defense, but really credit the pressure by the defensive line, and now it'll set up a long kick for Wiggins, Terrence Jones looks up at the clock to see the time, a minute six, fourth down, 24, 29 yard line is the line of scrimmage. The kick would come from the 36. It's a 46 yard kick. Let's see if Charlie Bailey, who I think has all his timeouts left, will call time to ice Todd Wiggins. Snap is down, kick on the way, and it is. Memphis State missed two chip shots, and Todd Wiggins has been shaky at best this year. Kicks a 46 yarder. And the green wave go ahead, 20 to 17. One minute left in the ballgame. Don't you know, don't you know that John Butler is really feeling bad right yep. now? Two missed field goals for being very, very close, well within his range. He's usually Mr. Automatic. Let's see if Memphis State now can put a drive together with one minute to go. They, by all rights, should be ahead 23 to 20. But it's 2017. Charles Wilson has returned one kick 95 yards. I wonder if they'll kick it to him. He stands at his own five. Charlie Bailey, obviously depressed. I'd sure look for something kicked along the ground here. I, I, I would not think they want to get the ball up in the air to Charles Wilson. Tough break for this defense, really, which has played so well tonight. The fumble by Tim Jones, and he played so hard, other than the interception on a long gamble was thrown tonight. He was really, I think, showing up Terrence Jones to a certain degree. They let the football go, and they're going to keep it away from Wilson, but the Tigers will let it roll. It's picked up at the 20 yard line by. John Norman, one of the up men, and he takes it to the 33 with 56 seconds to go. Tigers have all their timeouts left, all three. They'll have to go. Mr. Two. at the 32, so they're going to have to go 68 yards. Mr. Two minute offense, win. Andy Whitwell coming into the ball game. He's Memphis State's passing quarterback. They're going to air it out here. Side and he's got his man at the 50. Well spotted at the 48 yard line of Tulane with 49 seconds to go. The clock is stopped while they move the chains. Whitwell one for one. Boy, this is a tough spot for Andy to come in off the bench. He hadn't thrown much. He got to come in and try to direct the winning drive. Three wide receivers in. Whitwell, plenty of time, throws a quick out looking for Perkins and it's incomplete at the 45. Lonnie Martz got in Perkins' face. The ball was thrown like a bullet. Well, that only took six seconds off the clock. Pressure on Andy Whitwell. All right, I'll tell you what. Terrence Jones and Tulane, they call it the goal of doom for last second heroics. And they get this game. They'll be back to the table. Second down, 10 yards to go. Whitwell. 
well. Up in the pocket, he lets loose now. And off by Mitchell Price. 33 seconds to go, and that'll probably do it. Oh, that was tough. It looked like they had his double coverage down on Ray Kraft. Andy Whitwell has been caught by the interception bug this year. He throws another one here. And a little bit of pressure, moved up in the pocket nicely. Hey, that's too much pressure. He was fortunate, though, looking for Kraft. Mitchell Price playing center field in the prevent defense, picks it off at the eight yard line. 33 ticks on the clock, Charlie Bailey, a little frustrated. You can't blame him. A 21 yard field goal and a 23 yard field goal missed tonight by John Butler. And then a 46 yarder with about a minute and a half to go in the game gives Tulane what seems to be a victory. Jones gives it ahead to the fullback. is stopped by Memphis State. That's their first time out. We'll take a break. 26 seconds to go in this football game. Tulane by a field goal, 20 to 17. Second down and eight yards to go for Terrence Jones in the green wave at their own 10-yard line. There's two yards up the middle to the 12. 22 seconds, as you see, on the clock. And the Tigers will call their second time out, one remaining. Stop made by Rick Fredette. Boy, you got to really feel sorry for Charlie Bailey. His staff worked extremely hard all week long preparing for this ball game. And you come out here, you've got every opportunity, and the kids just can't hang on to it. Very tough night for the Tigers. Three tough plays, really. Two missed field goals, one from 21, one from 22 yards away. And then the fumble by Tim Jones, who had really played a spectacular game up until that point. And I, I feel so sorry for John Butler, but I tell you, I really feel sorry for any more. You see him talking to the Tiger Brain Trust right now because, I mean, they played so well tonight. They stopped a guy who finished fifth in the voting for the Heisman last year. He got some good yardage tonight, but, I mean, they made so many big plays. And any more of those three interceptions, he'll probably be our Budweiser player of the game, huh? No doubt about it. I don't see how we can give it to anybody else, although the entire defensive unit rose to the occasion. How can you leave out Marlon Brown and, and Tony Manning's done a super job and, and Corey Epps up and down the line. Memphis State looking for the football back most likely. Unless Terrence Jones just runs the whole clock out here. He is out of bounds at the 18. It's short of the first down by about a yard, but the clock, and the clock is stopped with nine seconds. Demon Young and Mike Nettles forced him out of bounds. He was actually not out of bounds. He touched his leg, so they used their last time out. We'll be back for the finish in a second. Memphis State has to go for the block, and they're going to take a safety. Running it out of the end zone is the punter with three seconds to go. Mika Knox goes out of bounds, so that makes the score 2019. There's three seconds left on the clock, and there's a flag on the play. It's time, Bob, for us to pick our defensive player of the game, and I don't, uh, it's really our Budweiser player of the game. It goes to one of the defensive team members, without a doubt. It's got to go to Eddie Moore. Three interceptions ties a school record. Also the fumble recovery, several block passes. Eddie Moore just had one heck of a ball game tonight for the Tigers. All right, the clock says two seconds now. They have a dead ball foul on the white team after the safety, penalized to the 35, free kick, safety counts. Well, any chance of...